Yes, guys, done. Yes. Yes. Yes, I'm done. Good. Yes. yes. Still, there is one person remaining, so after that we will discuss. So, what I'm trying to do now is that our session should be directly going on YouTube on our channel. So, for that purpose, I make it live on YouTube, but it will not be appear to everyone. Because our trainings, most of the time, we don't make uh, available for everyone. Uh, these are like unlisted. So only those people having the link, they can see. So any of you, they have the uh, available. They are those who are on the laptop. They can just open this on the browser, but keep your microphone on mute. Okay, for the for the YouTube, keep yourself mute. Okay, let's start discussion. Okay, safety is primarily an ethical responsibility of both employee and employer. True, very good. Employees have the right to request an OSHA inspection if you believe there are safe and unhealthy conditions available in your workplace. Very good, true. Employees responsible for training required by OSHA standard. True or false? How many of you have written true? How many of you have written true? No problem. If you have written true, no problem. But you must be confident. You should be fair on these things. So this is a responsibility of employer to provide you training. 
right not the employee wherever they are going to assign you according to the hazards of that workplace it is their responsibility to provide you training right it, but it is not a necessary requirement that they will provide you osha 30 hours training osha 10 hour training the requirement for them is to provide you the training about the hazards right to which yes. you are associated but uh, one of my cousin who is in usa uh, when i was discussing with him last time when he came here so he told that i mean starting of the job they are required to attend the training and then the record and the for the training should be available and then they can allow to work in some some of the like construction projects even if they are not the safety department they are not the labor but he is an architecture engineer structure engineer so he told me that even when i am going on site and it is just for make a inspection for my design so it is necessary that before entering on that site i should have uh, you know the relevant training available they should check my card and then they allow me to enter in the card or to enter in the site uh so those who have written true question number 3 it's false okay so those who have written true they can give themselves zero marks employer has to report osha in case of permanent loss or amputation or loss of an eye within 24 hours correct very good this is true it is the responsibility of employee to post osha citations and hazard correction notices Uh, this is not the responsibility of employee this is the responsibility of employer employee so those who have written as true uh, they can give themselves zero marks as i told you remember the more zero you will have which means that you will be reading more so this is a correct answer uh, this is not the true employees must correct workplace hazard by the date indicated on the citation and must certify these hazards have been reduce or eliminate yes true or false this is me is it true it's true yes anyone false they, they, they are responsible also the employees are all of uh, they are all of no, responsible no, for uh, identify the hazards in the workplace sorry <clears throat> the employers employers they are responsible about this correct this wrong very good this is the responsibility of employer i will show you on the book if we can see the page number 3 yeah page number 3 but uh, which one is the point uh, you have the right to see okay sorry must correct the word place hey, just a minute so it is the responsibility of employee not the employer if you see page number 3 you will find the point number what rights and responsibility employees do have 1 2 3 4 fifth i think fifth fifth point is the your employer must correct workplace hazards by day. so it is the responsibility of employer okay it is the responsibility of employer not the employee so this is false check point number 5 in your book yes report any work related yes no the point number 5 no, no, is the rights and responsibilities of employees under osha but this is the heading is employees but this point is for the employer 1 2 3 4 your employer must correct workplace so this is for the employer not for the employee okay and here in the question we have written employee so that's why it is false okay so that's why it is false so those who have written true they can give themselves zero please as i yeah which is good so please those who have started the youtube please make your youtube on zero volume because the voice is getting dub very good part 1926 is the standard for osha general industry true or false well i i got this random man i have no idea it is, it is false it is about construction 
very good pause. very good nay no, chit and about jan desra jan desra very good very good yes shahzeb i can't hear you true or false no i can't hear you anyway this is false because 1926 is for the journalist now for the construction not for the journal. ibrahim your voice is too much echo <laughs> part i make your i make you mute <laughs> so i i will not get disturbed but whenever you want you can take out the mute no problem part 1910 is the standard for osha jana industry true or false yeah that is right that is right okay. very true. good correct answer so this is true jana industry is 1910 and construction is 1926 these are two important standards so you should remember this thing imminent danger fatality or hospitalization and worker complaint refers are different types of osha inspection true very good maximum yeah, most of true. you have written true so this is true one of the guy has written as false no problem give yourself zero falsifying information under osha act an employer providing false information to osha can receive a fine up to 10000 dollar or up to 6 month in jail true or false true this is true 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 is it true all, if all are saying true yalla let's make it true yeah true yes this is correct true so just count your marks and see what is your progress about day 1 70% very good ibrahim yes sir i right true total marks total marks out of 10 uh no 9 uh, maybe or 8 check, because check. i have 7 uh, seven... okay so almost 8 10 you can say good khaja khaja anwaruddin think 7 marks out of 10 7 good shazeb नहीं आवाज आ रही यार तुम्हारी इट्स ओके उंगलियों से बता दो फिंगर्स सिक्स ओके हुसैन हुसैन खान मरवान आतिफ टेन आउट ऑफ टेन फॉर मी माशा गुड नाइट नाइन 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 गुड ओके अब्दुल जब्बार क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स इज फॉल्स Abdul Jabbar. Abdul Jabbar, six, I think, sir, six. <laughs> okay, you still think you are not sure, Doctor Mohan. Six or five. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> very good, very good, excellent. Nizamuddin, what is it? Seven. Nine, sir. Seven out of ten. Good, good, good. Musa, nine. Ten, sir. Ten. Good. Musa Rushdi. I didn't receive ball actually. I don't know. Yes, yes. So which means you are hundred percent. Mabruk, mabruk. Musa, <laughs> how many? Eight. Eight is good. Excellent. Yeah. So those those participants who have uh, are six, not six, because our examination criteria is also seven marks. So those participants having seven and above, they are going good, which means that they have listened what we discuss. and they make the revision for the exercise so now we will proceed to our second chapter any co- any question from chapter number 1 uh, i have one question mr anas yes please yes, uh in homework there are some point uh, what is the north american industry classification and the uh, in ai is cs mhm uh, in the form that, they they asking to write code i don't know what is this code yes because as i told you yesterday that there are this form is basically designed for usa on the government level mm. we are living in saudi arabia so when we will be adopting this form if we will make the changes according to our requirement right so there yes. are many points in this form which needs to be you know updated according to our requirement so 
so don't worry about this if it is for no, this the form which you have downloaded maybe it will be from the osha north america uh, some others people they have downloaded the south Amer south uh, uh, american form so sometimes the regulations are also going to be changed state wise right so don't okay. worry about these things no problem okay so can you see my screen yes yes sir can you see the presentation no no, no i cannot see no. just yes. now we yeah. can yes, see yes we can see, see yes we can see, see, see carefully see carefully then you will see okay good okay now our next chapter is about health and safety management programs yesterday we gave you the the introduction about osha and second chapter is about health and safety management when we are dealing with health and safety we are responsible as a supervisor as an engineer as a safety manager to manage the safety as well apart from development and implementation we are also responsible for management those people who are the part of management team in the organization they are the one who are responsible for the management of safety and ultimately our top management is responsible for health and safety in the organization right to develop the system to provide the resources to make the decision making these are all the responsibilities of our top management so safety and health management programs are for those people who are the part of management when they are going to start the health and safety management in their company from where they need to start right from mm. for example you have been hired by the company and they say that we don't have any system for safety available so you are a safety engineer you are a safety officer so we expect from you to develop the health and safety system for us so from where you are going to start in this chapter we are going to discuss those topics okay so there are eight elements of safety management how many elements eight management these eight man management of of uh, these eight elements of safety management this is not a thumb rule right this is not a thumb rule this is being defined by different bodies they define different elements but most of them commonly there are they consider these eight as the pillars of safety management if you have uh, these pillars available so you can establish your safety system but if you don't have these pillars available if you consider the example of a building when we are going to construct a building the first thing we are going to make the pillars we are going to make the columns right so if these columns are strong then on the basis of this column we say that we can build up more and more and more floors but if the columns are weak if the pillars are weak so which means that we cannot grow up to more so if our these elements are strong then our safety management system will be strong and if our these elements are weak then our safety management system will also be weak so the first element is about commitment and leadership every standard requires that you need to have a commitment from the top management when you are going to start the safety system when you are going to start the safety management system you need to have a commitment available from the top management most of the time i have come across with these kind of arguments from our students or from our colleagues and friends that our management is not serious about safety they think that safety is only uh, uh, only they require the resources it's uh, another name of spending the money so we should not focus on it but in case of there is any accident then the management is going to ask us so this is a very you know bad culture in the companies sometimes which you are feeling that the when it comes to an accountability they take very strong accountability for the safety stuff and when it comes to provision of resources when it comes to providing them facilitating them giving them the decision making authorities the safety uh, the company's top management they are not taking these things as seriously so commitment from the top management is very necessary and how we will know that the top management is committed about the safety 
by looking their safety programs by looking their safety policy by looking on to that how much budget how much resources they have provided to the safety sometimes you will see that the director of the company will say that we are very committed to the safety safety is everyone responsibility and we are doing too much about safety but when you see that how many people they have for the safety you will find that they don't have any person available who is responsible for the safety development but when you see that how much resources financial resource human resource they are going to spend for the sake of safety see there, there is nothing so this kind of leadership if we have seen that many places the top management they don't wear the ppes they don't wear helmet they don't wear safety shoes while they are on the production side or they are on the construction side but they are expecting that all their employees their laborers they should wear these ppes which are mandatory in this area so this is not the commitment the commitment is by lead by example always a good leader when we say that uh, we need to have the leadership available when we say that we need to have the commitment from the top management is available it means that the commitment will come from the top it's not like they have hired a safety engineer or safety manager and then they will sleep and then they will forget about safety because they think that we have the safety department available it's not the case they have to prove by their actions they have to prove by their decision making uh, activities that they are committed to the safety i have seen in some companies uh, they are having weekly walk about safety they are having monthly walk with the top management where the top management and the uh, safety department department and manager they go together on site and they identify that what are the issues related to safety they discuss with the people they see the overall infrastructure and this is one of the way to show the commitment that yes we are committed to the safety by the top management they they are participating in safety meetings they are participating in the uh, uh, safety week they are providing the funds they are providing the resources to establish the safety week to purchase the ppes good quality ppes so these are all things which we are going to see which which are going to show that the management is is committed sometimes they are also uh, for example they are providing the resources in terms of objectives they are going to approve the objectives whatever the budget is needed to achieve these objectives they are going to fulfill these requirements sometimes we have seen that the company's local management is not too much committed but the head office or the corporate office which is outside of the area or outside of the country they have a very strong commitment so due to the pressure of their corporate the companies are making the commitment similarly another thing why the man the management are making the the commitment towards safety or why they are obliged to make the safety arrangement because of the legal pressure if it is a law of your country that for every 50 people you have to keep the safety officer you should have the system for safety you should have the system for safety policy risk assessment workers participation then the management they are they are they have to do because they don't have another option available if they are not going to do these things they will get penalty they will be charged for these things so this is one of the element and first element and very important element that Uh, we need to have a commitment and leadership available for the safety then accountability see always remember you uh, you cannot make accountable the people until and unless you are not going to give them the responsibility so if the management is not giving them responsibility then they cannot take the accountability and that's why in companies when you are going to join the company they are going to give you the job description they told that okay sign this job description and submit one copy in the hr and sub keep one copy with you so they make sure that you have read and you have understood the your responsibilities so then you are accountable for these responsibilities for example if a person is responsible for a project and he is not taking interest in this project and the project timeline is exceeding then what will happen then the accountability the management will ask you gentlemen we have given you the responsibility for this project we make you project engineer or project head and your project is you are not reporting anything we don't see the progress of the project so he is accountable so similarly 
those people who are having some responsibility of safety they are also accountable this accountability is a is a common factor in all human beings if we don't have the the fear of accountability then it might be possible that we will be not following the requirements for example if someone told you don't worry about your akhirah if you don't want to pray no need to pray okay so then we will say okay yalla let's have party all the time no need to pray but we have as a muslim we have the fear for accountability that if i am not going to pray somebody will ask me right maybe in my dunya or in my akhirah but somebody is going to ask me so we pray similarly in companies you have the system for basma you make fingerprint fingerprint when you go that 8 o'clock you have to make fingerprint if you will reach 8:30 one time you can be ignored two times you can be ignored but if you will make this habit and your hr department is strict so they will give you a warning that gentlemen you are coming late every day we our office timings are from 8 to 5 pm so you have to come on time so you can be warned so accountability is very necessary so that's why in the companies they have the system for accountability in terms of safety if the people are not be responsible for the safety accountability if the area supervisor or area engineer thinks that uh, my job is only for the project my job is not about the accountability of safety then he will be not taking any interest in the safety he will not be allowing his worker to go for the safety training he will not be allowing the workers to bypass the to to focus on the safety but he will be forcing them to bypass the safety for example we have seen that many time when the investigation goes the result conclude that the person the worker who was making this mistake actually he was under pressure from the his supervisor right when they say bisura 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 yalla fast 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 we need to finish it by today you cannot go until unless you finish it today so what the worker is going to do worker is going to bypass the safety right uh, we have seen there are many companies having very good system of accountability about safety uh, for example we have seen the shlum burger is one of the example i would say uh, they have very good system of safety and they have a very strong accountability on safety they say they used to say i i did many audits in shlum burger they used to say that we provide all possible resources to our area supervisor as a leader of area but at the same time we make very strong accountability to him if there is any accident is going on on his area and the investigation says that this was due to the problem from the supervisor that he pushed them workers or he told them to bypass the safety or he Uh, he uh, did not provide him the training due to which the accident has occurred so he will be the fire not the person who get injured he is going to be fire but his supervisor his area is area manager he is the one who is going to be fire from the company who is going to be terminated from the company because he was responsible we provide them all possible resources to him whatever he was needed and for example i give you simple uh, one of the example that what happened that one day the they because slumberger they have the sites or you know drilling sites are always away from the city so they have some protocols that before sunset you have to leave or after sunset you cannot leave because it is a remote area or whatever it is so it was their policy that whenever you are going to leave for example after rotation of 20 days or 15 days when you are going to leave the site you should be travel on the day time right so you will be fresh and you can go to your destiny on time within the city one day there was a, a, a worker who whose uh, rotation for the 15 days were were going to be ended so his supervisor told him that i have some extra work today so if you can stay for up to 3 4 o'clock and then you can go to the to your own side because you have to go home no problem if you will be delaying we will give you extra uh, overtime he told okay no problem i will stay so he stay on that day and he work and then finally in the evening time he left 
so when he left because they have to go by car for 4 hours or 5 hours journey it was away so while he was seated with the driver on the front seat he fall in sleep definitely when you are doing very hard work during the whole day and you are sitting in in an air conditioned car and the highway is very good then what will happen right in the night time you will fall in sleep so the driver he was awake the the uh, worker who was beside him he fall in sleep when he fall in sleep so when the driver saw him that he is falling in sleep so he also getting you know sort of drowsiness so finally he he also like and by the time they got accident and alhamdulillah there was no such loss of uh, uh, you know uh, injury or such problem but the car was damaged so when the investigation they started the investigation so they know the whole thing that they come to know that the worker was supposed to do go in the morning time but his supervisor told him that go in the evening time and he was agreed and then he went so if you are a safety manager or if you are a director of the company to whom you are going to make you know punishment yes mr husain i would make it for uh, the employer uh, the supervisor of that area because he was the one who forced him to uh, make a decision even though he knew at that time after work hours you are usually tired exactly very good g naim sir what do you think i think sir both are responsible for this one mm mm-hmm. how employer sorry the area supervisor is responsible because he is forcing him and also employee is responsible because he accepted his job and he knows the hazards of going in night or traveling in night instead in spite of this he accepted that one he should also use his sense he should use also his mind right right okay good yes mr rushdi what do you think both also because everyone have to take care about his safety and fairness then after that the responsibility of the supervision and the right very good actually they what they have done that they have given the termination to the supervisor because uh, he was the one who made all these things and then they give the warning letter to the worker right because worker was he was he told that i don't have the you know uh, i don't have any issue because i was not supposed to drive myself uh, i thought that even if i sleep no problem for the driver but unfortunately so the the good thing that the driver who made the mistake on site he was safe he didn't get anything so the lessons learned if you see in small companies i have seen many times many times not a single case many cases that all the time for us it is very easy to make the employee as responsible person right that he is not serious on work he is always careless he make every time fun his attitude is uh, he do he used to do uh, you know horse playing during the work so this kind of thing is very easier for us to to say all the time for the employees and to blame our employees but in actual behind every accident there is a management failure always remember behind every accident there is a management failure so if the employee has no awareness so then he will make the mistake if employee has no fear for the accountability then he will make the mistake if employee consider that i am the king i am the over confident person i am working with this a uh, hazardous situation for last 15 years i have done nothing why you are coming as a safety engineer new and you are going to teach me so this is the over confidence right so the overall culture of the company is going to decide that what is the level for the uh, the organization health and safety for example i used to go some sites where the site safety belt uh, sorry seat belt is one of the mandatory requirement so i have seen sometimes two kind of drivers 
those who are going to pick you from uh, you know city to these remote sites normally companies they provide the pick and drop if you are a auditor or the trainer so when they are going on the highway they are wearing the seat belts when they are going in the remote area they remove the seat belt and when they enter in the site again they are wearing the seat belt this is one of the attitude wherever they see that there is no accountability factor they violate the safety because they are wearing the safety belt with due to the fear of accountability not due to they don't understand that it is necessary for my own safety on the other hand i have seen some drivers that if you are not wearing the safety belt they will ask you sir please wear the safety belt it is our company policy it is for our safety if you don't mind please wear this so this is another attitude of the driver same category maybe same company or different company so here you will see the overall culture of the company that sometime you are and and these are the best people from where you can get the insight about all the companies when you are traveling with them you will ask them about the companies take inside what about this what about that how many accident do you have and then after getting all this information you will utilize this information during the audit right so accountability is very necessary in terms of safety quality it is it becomes a responsibility that we that's why it is mentioned in the job descriptions uh, organization charts objectives and targets then we have safety involvement how we can involve our companies i used to go in some companies the office is very good and once you enter you will find too many racks and they have red folders white folders green folders and you become inspired oh which means that they have a very good system of safety too much files and if you see the safety manager table you will find too many pages seems that it, he is very busy all the time and once you go on site you will find too much violations of safety so what does it mean that safety starts from this office and safety ends in this office he is the person who is making all these folders and files to to show that i am very busy but in actual the say there is no involvement of the people there is no involvement of other departments within the safety if you take interview from other department they will say that we don't know anything about safety this is the responsible person you should ask so safety involvement in overall organization is very necessary and this is one of the challenge which is being faced by the departments all the time which is being faced by the hsc manager that nobody is going to participate with them nobody is going to listen them and when they when they are going to discuss with the top management they are not going to take them seriously because why they remain themselves as isolated they think that we are a superman we are a superior person we are no need to have the interaction with the other people and you know that if you have a good communication skills then many of the things you can make by your interpersonal skills rather than making the policies and procedures so involvement in terms of the people in terms of safety meetings taking the corrective actions providing the awareness to the people about health and safety it's very necessary so safety involvement so those companies if you ask them that how do i know that you have a good involvement of safety in our audits we are required to make interview with the workers so sometimes i used to ask workers what do you know about safety so what is their answer it is shoes <laughs> very good they used to say safety, safety shoes, shoes. safety shoes neither even sometimes helmet or safety shoes that's all why they know about safety shoes because this is the most one of the attraction which they are getting every every year without any problem because yes. it is a company policy to provide the safety shoes after every year to the employee right so yes. they know only about safety shoes so i used and to the say shoot. yes and the cover all yes exactly so i used to say to that manager or to that engineer who remains with me i say why this worker see they, this worker he knows about safety shoes because he is keeping the safety in his shoes only 
right our workers mm. they keep the safety in their shoes so this is right. level of right. your safety involvement in the company so if you are going to provide them training if you are going to provide them awareness they will be knowing other things as well but since you do not provide them any awareness training uh, their involvement the communication with them in terms of safety is is not good is improper so the only thing which they are going to have is the safety issues so they will be remembered safety issues if you are going to give him for example you have monthly recognition system in your company about safety that he is our safety champion of the department just give him 100 real select anyone which you see that he he has good uh, you know uh, is following the safety throughout the month now even after 5 years if you ask him that what what are the things which he is going to follow at that time he will be remember that because i was following i was wearing my 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 suit my cover all was always remain clean i wear all the ppes so due to this thing the company awarded me 100 real right so what does it mean it means that we don't have a involvement system in company so safety starts from the safety department office and safety finish in the safety department office you will find many curl for files you will find many reports and he will show you this analysis that analysis this report that that report and you will get inspired but in actual when you go on site the system is going to speak in front of you you know i used to say to come that whenever you are going on site within 15 to 20 minutes you will know the level of the company health and safety right sometimes company has very good infrastructure the company is new very expensive you know glasses windows and everything uh, furniture is very good but they don't have safety culture so you will know this within 15 to 20 minutes when you are in this company anyway our next point is safety communication safety communication throughout the organization should be clear there should be a system for communication available sometimes you will go on site and on the site there is, there is a big board site safety rules you are required to wear helmet when you are entering in this site site timings are these you should go for the safety induction before entering in the site you should wear safety shoes you should wear helmet you should wear cover all so this is going to have a communication system sometime you will find in the department uh, no smoking right high noise area always wear safety shoes these are all communication means whenever there are any accident you are going to make the accident investigation report results with the team with the overall company so they are they are these are the lessons learned so communication in terms of notice board signages emails newsletters uh, Uh, sharing of uh, uh, you know investigation results uh, sharing of audit results these are all our part of safety communication the safety communication has two types internal communication and external communication so those communication which we are doing internally within our company about the safety these are internal safety communication and those things which we are doing with external parties for example uh legal department for example customer for example suppliers for example neighbors these are all our external parties so with them the communication should be formal and you are required to maintain the record of this communication for example in terms of osha so whatever communication you have made with the osha you need to maintain the record of this communication right so this is one of the requirement for the organization hazard identification and control hazard identification hazard khatar right hazard in arabic it's khatar hazard identification and control hazard identification and control means that we need to identify all possible hazards which can have impact on the people who are working in our organization right always remember that you can eliminate the hazard but the outcome of the hazard is the risk right risk makhatir the outcome of hazard is the risk you cannot make risk as zero until and unless hazard is there risk could, could not be zero until and unless hazard is there so the ideal situation is to eliminate the hazard some companies 
they used to say that we have we want zero accident in our company right have you listened this thing that we want zero accident in our company they also yes. asked during yeah, the training every, every company yes, right yes. almost every company they used to yeah, say every company so almost the answer every. the answer is very simple what do you give the answer if they ask you for example ibrahim if he ask me he want zero uh, yani accident. accident or what yes accident in his company then what should they do well if if he ask me to make the accident zero i follow all the rule and uh, this uh, elements you told me before here uh, uh, yani uh, communication and uh, identification control yani uh, and follow the rules every everything it's uh, reduce the the number of accident yani okay good good yes mr atif if they are going if the company is going to ask you we, we need zero accident in our company then what is uh, your answer uh, we should uh, make a, a safety plan mhm mm okay and once the safety plan is available the, which means the company will have zero accident right yes and the train all uh, employee about so uh, they will make the training about safety about for safety. all employees yeah let's make osha 30 hours to all the company and then you will make sure that they have zero accident right maybe yes okay try this in your company and then i will ask you uh i i have to add something yes uh, yes please according to me um, it can't be possible if uh, you have you, you have zero accident because if there is a risk uh, there there should be uh, possibility of uh, any accident right very good you see cannot, uh, there is only one case sometime companies they ask me mr wallahi mr they... anas yes marwan yes mr anas we can uh, go to the target zero accident we can very good, uh, good. In, in each in each company uh, we can't uh, go to this target because but we can minimize the the number of accident for example 19% or 80% very good very but uh, 0% no it is very it's not perfect there is, there is no something uh, in real it's perfect when you have zero accident it, we we talk about the perfect uh, goals and the perfect objective of risk uh, management exactly very good when they I... ask me sometimes some manager safety manager or some management you know director of the company they asked me that how can we make the zero accident work uh, my answer is very simple close your company make it lock no hazard no accident hey. yes i think yeah. about that what it's okay nice nice you work you must uh, make mistake exactly until unless human are working then there is a, always a chance for mistake right even you have provided the training to them even you have all the possible controls to them but still there is a chance of any mistake there is a chance that any of the control will fail but what do you consider a good company those companies where the accidents are not going to be repeated they have learned from their past accident investigation they have learned from their corrective actions those companies are going to improve very fast as compared to those companies who don't have the system available right so if the company is going to take the action on their previous accident they are going to do the root cause analysis they are going to make the corrective actions and they are going to implement this corrective action throughout the organization then you will find that in our why we have lot of accidents in the maintenance department why we have the too many accident of same type when we are doing the construction activities because we don't make the corrective action we make the correction we make the correction when we make the correction the things are not going to be improved so that's why we need to have a we need to eliminate the hazard then only we can say that there is no chance of accident until unless hazard is there risk will be there when risk will be there then the chance of accident is there right uh, i have a question uh, if yes, i please. can ask uh, what can 
can you give me an example of what corrective action I can apply? For example, I have a maintenance team and uh, okay, they made a mistake of not wearing gloves and they're using a grinder and that, for example, the disc cut off. So what corrective actions I can take? I can give See, them glove. There are two actions which we are going to take, although this it is a part of our accident investigation example, but we can give so we can go fast during our accident investigation element. See, there are two things which you are going to do after any accident. The first thing is the correction. For example, if the accident is happening, what you will say you will do, you will take out the grinding disc and you will provide him first aid and you are going to rectify the grinding disc. In, this is our correction, right? Or you will okay. change the worker. This is our correction or we can say sometimes interim action. Then the corrective action is to do the root cause and why it was happening. Then you will mm. start your fishbone diagram, your FMEA, your SWOT analysis, right? Whatever the, the uh, what you call them, uh, uh, the relevant the, root cause analysis theory you are going to apply. It might be possible that there is a problem with the grinder itself. It was not inspected for last couple of months. It might be possible that person who is operating the grinder he is the trainee or he is the assistant because the main supervisor or the operator was absent. That's why due to this activity, he is going to perform this activity and he was not trained in this activity, right? It might be possible that there is a problem with the handling. It might be possible that there is a problem uh, with the with the piece which he is going to cut. So we need to see sure. many aspects. Safe to, to have a competent manpower is one of the control. To have the trained staff for controlling any of the hazard is one of the control. For example, if the job can be covered by an engineer and you have hired a person who is not qualified or who he does not have any technical knowledge or experience, then the same job will be done by an engineer and the same job will be done by a layman. Definitely there will be a very much difference. If you are a True. car driver and I will give you tomorrow that yellow, let's, let's start the dumper because you have the car license available. You are driving the car for last 10 years. So the, what is the difference? Both have a steering, both have the gear. You, you have to just operate. So can you do it? No. Although no. you are having the license for last 10 years. So we need to see that the activities which we are going to provide, it depends so those who are doing the activities, are they competent enough on their jobs of the controls which are related to the infrastructure, machine uh, machine and equipment. They are relevant. The, the controls which are associated with the material to which he is going to use, is it okay or no? Then we can say that uh, there is a control. We, we, we need to apply the corrective actions on these controls, right? Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. No problem. Educate. Then we have accident. Why we need to uh, investigate the accident? To prevent uh, further uh, accidents from happening and to minimize very good. Uh, that same type of accident ever happening again. Very good. Very good. Yes. We need to. I mean, so we need the, to do the investigation to avoid the recurrence. To avoid the words. repetition. Very good. Very good. Very good the repetition yes if the accidents are not being investigated properly then there is a chance of repetition as i gave you the example earlier to have the accident it's not a big problem it's a bit big problem but not a very big problem the very big problem or the major problem or the disaster is to repeat this accident why we are going to have repeat because we last time we did not make the root cause analysis we did not take the correct corrective actions so that's why this accident is going to be repeated, right? Sometimes what happened that we have accident and we, for example, there is an acid spill on the ground. You will clean this acid and you will say that we have taken the action. This is not the correct corrective action. This is correction. A person is going to be fall from height and you will say, okay, next time we have make the rule that when who is going to work on height, we will make the, uh, he has to wear the safety rule, okay? So it might be possible that when the monitoring is not strong, there will be another person who will work without the PPEs. So this is not the good corrective action. We need to take the corrective action. So it's, it's necessary that we need to have a 
proper root cause analysis system and it will be done by a team always a number so accident investigation is more discussed as a full module in iosh course uh, it is not the part of our osha course so we are not going to discuss how to do the root cause analysis what are the causes of accident these are all uh, discussed in iosh course anyway education and training education for what if a worker is hired in your organization he is diploma then it is the employer responsibility to make him phd what no do you way, think about actually, of actually course not, not. course not then um, education and training is making Just him competent enough about the safety the safety hazard signs about the hazards hazards and uh, what and even telling him what to do if he see any hazard and there is a risk that someone might get injured what action plan uh, he has to take that is also a part of his training and education exactly very good very good excellent so we need to provide our employees the education awareness and training about those things which are considered as hazard for them to those hazards to which they are associated with them about the precautions about the controls we need to provide them and depending on the level of their responsibility we need to provide them the training for example osha 30 hours is not necessary to provide everyone in the company okay third party training with a third party is not a requirement to provide uh, everyone in the company okay so the thing is that the the people who are working in the company they should aware of the hazards and they should follow the controls which are necessary right then we have continuous improvement continuous improvement is now we call it continual improvement uh, anyway no problem it is continuous or continual the thing is that if your safety system is not going to make the improvement in your safety culture which means that your other seven elements are very weak you need to work on it right so when we see that our seven elements for example commitment accountability safety involvement communication risk assessment accident investigation and education system is good then we can say that we have good system of safety right then we are going to improve if we are not going to improve in our accidents we have the safety department available we have the we have the iso certification for safety available we have osha standard available and still if the system is not good then we can say that we are not following these above elements that's why we are still not improving ours right any question yes mr anas hmm yes please about uh, education and training uh, education and training it's yani part from uh, involvement yani we can put this two point together Mm-hmm. yes it's involvement it's yani one of the separate, yani. one, one of the mean for involvement is the education and training but mm-hmm. there are some other means of involvement for example uh, corrective action for example meetings for example to have the culture available so these are also involved in the safety mm-hmm. element but to have the focus on training and education uh, they make this as an as an independent pillar so the organization can focus on them mm-hmm. otherwise you will say that we have put the safety rules on the notice board and this notice board nobody is going to read you have put this notice board in english while the people who are working in the department they understand only arabic or urdu mm-hmm. what will happen you will say see yes. we are very responsible and we have put all the communication we have you know yes. put our responsibility but it's not the case you need to train them you need to make the awareness to them target target them okay right and uh, just one one more question Take about two continuous questions. ask ask two question <laughs> not one question thank you continuous improvement now uh, yani are there any uh, yani uh, fixed plan or uh, some course yani like me i'm working bil laden now if i ask myself how engineer ibrahim how you can improve the uh the yani safety plan or safety in your company 
there are some يعني uh, rules I can follow it or uh, some يعني plan it's fixed I can find it in internet or any place or any course or any يعني see the the best thing that you should start with these elements if your company is, is still not having a good system of safety which means that maybe you are not following any one of the element or any two of the element as i told you most of the time the gap and the problem it comes from the element number 1 right mm. and you as an employee you cannot uh, you know you cannot train your top commitment top management you cannot speak too much about in in front of your top management you have limited authority right so mm. if you want to improve yourself just follow these elements make the actions on these element that what are the things you can do in your company so yes. then you will see the results right can if i have labor elements or... exactly laborers your 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 supervisors your in charges you should mm. in, you should apply these pillars to these elements on them and then you will see the performance you cannot improve the overall culture of the company if you are responsible for one department but yalla let's start with your own department when i was working in dalda unilever when i started my career so i was working as a production officer so i was not a safety in charge or nothing but we had we used to have the same training like you guys have in your company like permit to work fire first aid these simple training and then i got you know more attracted towards that oh this is very good i can apply in my department i had i was responsible initially for i think 60 or 70 people in my department so we started applying these thing whenever we have the shift startup we started toolbox system we started the permit to work system within my department i am i was not responsible for any other department. but when i see the changes i started applying 5s we will discuss also about 5s so we have seen the changes in one month in two months we have seen that the people the overall system in my department is going to be improved the level of competence of my department is much better than the other department because whenever we get time i used to say yeah la, let's sit together and discuss the the things which we can do i used to talk my manager on on at that time that we we need this resource see this this uh, table is not properly fixed we need to fix them this color is 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 going to be you know uh, damaged we need to make this new color uh this line is is improper we need to clean make the cleaning for this so these are small initiatives and you will find that the things are going to be improved so start applying these elements in your company and give yourself time of one quarter six month you will see the change inshallah right and for this you don't need to be resources of 1 million available these most of these things you can do by yourself right yes mr rushdi Yes, for hazard hazard identification, for each business, some different type of hazard. What? How we can do this? Because it is not the same. In, in we will do it in our next slides. We will hmm. do it in our next slides. Don't forget. Okay. 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 Uh, after this, we will take the break. commitment and leadership it contains eight uh, uh, more six p's what are these six p's how do we know that the safety management is there uh, to to know about the commitment of the top management we need to have the safety programs available we need to have the policies available we need to have the plans available we need to have the process available procedures and practices available so these all will come from the top management you as an employee you cannot make the program even if you make the program you cannot implement until unless you don't have the resources available you don't have the decision making available you cannot you know initiate the policies for all over the company until unless it is being approved by the top management right so policies programs plans processes and procedures and practices these are all with the top management if you want to know the commitment of the top management you will see all these things and then you will come to know that what is the level of their commitment towards the safety yes marwan mr anas i have a question uh, about 
the process and the procedure. What is the difference between process and the procedure? I think the procedure is the include in uh, uh, in process. This is. See, process is the activity which you are going to do. Procedure is the document yeah. which you are going to follow to perform this activity. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Process is the activity. Yeah. For yeah. example, we have the process. Process is the activity in our company. For example, in Tahlia, I have a process of desalination of seawater. You know? Exactly. But so the procedure they are the book to apply the same management in the in exactly. this company. For example, we have the process and available that we are going to provide the training to you. How we are going to provide the training to you? Yeah. It will be written in the procedure. Right. So when we will be following exactly. our procedure. which right. means that we are applying this process and mm -hmm. the same thing that when we have the procedure available then we can practice this procedure right if you don't have so the procedure the available then how meaning the training to the employees for example yes practice in terms of doing the things if you don't have the the no. document available then what system you are going to follow maybe marwan is thinking in in for american standard Uh, Atif is thinking about uh, UK uh, uh, UK based standard. Uh, Firas is thinking about Tunisian standard. Morris will thinking about Jubail based standards. So everyone will thinking about their own standards. So that's why we need to have the procedures yeah. available. So those companies who have the policies and the procedure available, we say that okay, they have some nizam, they have the system available. Those companies who are weak in the policies and procedure, we say. yaar there is no system in the company right every manager comes and he start the things by in, in in his own you will find many companies here when you go there mm -hmm. you spend some time you will come to know that there is no system the system is the manager yeah right the, the procedure manager. is the manager whatever pro manager is saying this is the procedure khalas because so many company what, has book uh, manager but uh, the there is no more company has a leader exactly not only has yes. the leader there is no system they have the managers available but they they don't have the systems so if these manager think that until unless i am in the company so the people should follow me this is a you know this culture is is no more now uh, is going to be successful this formula is no more going to be successful i went in one of the yes. company you know you told me a very good i went in one of the telecom company very good company excellent yes. company you know they It's make the uh, they make the they make their manager kpis that in next one year you need to develop another manager like you from mm -hmm. your department right if i give this objective to you that you have to develop another marwan within one year then the first thing which will come in your mind which means that now the company is going to fire me that's why they want another replacement <laughs> for me <laughs> this is not right <laughs> yeah many many people are thinking like that right but that yeah. company yeah. they told that in future we have very vast expansion so we need mm -hmm. the leaders to to implement the existing system in our new projects so from where we will bring we cannot hire new people and then train them so we there will be some engineers who are very active there are some supervisors who are very active so they will be leading these things and if the manager is going to train another manager then definitely he will be a senior manager he will be going on on you know director level rather than to be manager you came in one company as a manager and you will retire with the level of manager so what is your professional development then zero so the companies they they do like this but this culture is is not common everywhere <laughs> this is very rare in some companies uh but we have to work in this direction right any question okay. thank you so much thank you so much yeah let's take 5 minutes break uh now it's uh, 5:25 so 5:30 we will come back okay inshallah inshallah
Yes, guys, available. Yes, yes, Mr. Anas. Yeah. Good, good, good. Can you see my screen? Yes. Here. Good. Okay. Goals and objectives. What are the goals and what are the objectives? As defined by OSHA, the goals are the short unstructured statements which are easy to write. They are nothing more than the wishes. Goals are the those statements which are unstructured and where there is no specification available. For example, promote the safety suggestion program get everyone trained to be zero accident right or reduce the accident or improve the safety culture so these are the goals the goals are short and unstructured statement on the other hand when we say objectives we are going to discuss those things we are going to make the commitment for those things which are structured statement and though these are going to provide more details for example the objectives should be smart when we say smart not like me in fact like you so objective when we say smart which means specific measurable action oriented or sometimes we say achievable uh, sometimes we say relevant or sometimes we say realistic and time bound so the objectives are required to be specific for example the management wish that we need to reduce the accidents so okay so this is what this could be one of our goal but when it comes to objectives these needs to be more specified these this needs to be more structured then we need to think on that what are the accidents which are going on first question second question which of the accidents we can remove we can eliminate or we can reduce further so maybe we will see our last six month or last one year number of accident we will come to know that most of the accidents are due to hand injuries most of the accidents are due to hand injuries so we need to reduce the those accidents for example we, we will say that for the smart objectives that we need to reduce 20 percent of hand injury accidents in our production department or maintenance department, whatever it is, right? So every objective which we are going to have, the goal must be approved by the management and the objective shall also be approved by the top management. Why the objectives are required to uh, approve by top management? Because if the top management is not going to approve then who is going to provide the budget? Who is going to provide the resources? Who is going to provide the manpower to, to meet this objective? So to meet our objectives, we need to have an approval from the top management. So ob our objectives shall always be smart. Now, any question about the objectives? There is another terminology, we call it KPI. KPI are also being derived from the objective, right? Uh, Sometimes the organizations, they define the strategic objectives for three years, for five years, for 10 years. From these strategic objectives, they, the objectives are cascaded down to different level of organization up to the workers, right? For example, the organization says that we are going to, to have one more site in next five years. Now we have one office in Jeddah, so we will be starting another factory in Riyadh. So, the, this is the strategic objective and maybe they have kept the budget of 50 million for this so they are going to make the strategic objective and in this five years it should be the idea should be materialized so they will be start finding the site where they have to make the factory they will start hiring the project manager project director then a contractor then they will assign the activities to contractor he will be doing his activities and after that they will start installation of machinery after installation of machinery then they will start for the hiring the manpower so they can run the company so in all these activities 
they they are the part of strategic objectives but when it comes to the down the line so may be possible that one of the manager will be responsible for purchasing of machine this is the target for purchase department one manager is responsible to hire the people in the mechanical department one person is responsible to hire the people for the make electrical department so there are strategic objectives which have been cascaded down to up to the level of down the line down the management so everyone will be following his own objective and then this small small objectives will be making their contribution in the main strategic objective right at your end you will be following your own objective your department will be following his own objective but your own objective will be contributing towards the the management objective which is being defined by strategic objectives clear clear any question clear. okay how many of you are working on the laptop they are i mean you are listening with the laptop can you raise your hands please marwan atif roshni mohan okay good 4 5 6 okay just keep your hands raised because now we are going to do the activity of objectives right so where you have to write something so you will be when i will divide you into three groups mainly you will be developing the three smart objectives for your company these smart objectives could be reduction in the injury improvement about the training but these must be related to the safety right i have already shared the format on the whatsapp you will be writing your objectives in that format and for that format you will be uh then we will be discussing these objective here on our screens right so now i will divide you guys into groups so how many people we have 1 2 3 4 uh four people are using only okay we will be dividing into three groups yeah i'm also using on laptop who are you hosan okay 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 yeah so in one of the group you uh, you so you have the formats available uh khwaja mohd roshdi marwan you guys all have the format available right if you yeah. don't have the format available from whatsapp you can make your own format no problem i will share the screen here so you can make the format by yourself it's a very simple format i will show you just a minute first i will show you the format and then can you see my screen now yes yes, yes we Good. can see so you can see that this is one of the format this i gave you the example objective statement planning steps target date how and when to monitor and the responsibility okay at this moment no need to write the monitoring status just write objective statement planning steps that how you are going to achieve this objective because if you don't have a strong plan then you cannot achieve the objective so for example acquire iso 45000 certification for the company so the planning steps are hiring of a consultant company get our key person trained development of policies implementation of these policies internal audit and then third party certification okay so target date could be by the end of december 2020 how we are going to monitor by our weekly meetings we are going to monitor and this meeting will be chaired by the top management and who is responsible person to meet this objective it could be a ceo it could be a general director it could be a safety manager any other manager so you need to define three objectives okay so by within your groups you will be discussing these thing just make 1 2 3 4 5 columns no need for this okay now i'm going to divide into groups where is the breakout yes guys in one group atif you have the laptop available right and yes dr yahya is also having the laptop available so we can shift him into other group uh afaq you you are on the laptop naeem mobile okay 
निजामुद्दीन Yeah, let's start. You will have ten minutes for this object uh, for this activity. Make only two objectives, okay? But these must meet the criteria of smart. Check on your window. You will be having one pop up. Join broadcast. Oh, join breakout. Okay, join breakout. So you will be in your group. everyone accept it good nizam accept kare na advisor so what safety uh, officer he can coordinate with him what's happening on site by weekly reports or by uh, monthly reports so that's how they can reduce the injuries in the workplace okay very good very good uh, anyone uh, has any question regarding to this objective they can ask him no yes other group members do you have any question no good explanation okay. very good uh, the objectives is very good i would just uh, input myself uh, that if we can define that what kind of injuries we are going to reduce it will be more specific right maybe sometimes what happened that you have the overall 100% of injuries uh, the contribution of head injuries are 35% the contribution of uh, hand injuries are 55% and the contribution of leg injuries or the eye injuries is 10% so definitely we will be working on those injuries which are critical or which are more in volume overall injuries so if we define it for example 35% of injuries which are critical or we are are we say it lost time accidents okay those injuries which have caused the lost time accident so it will be more specific otherwise it's very excellent uh right. yes can you please unshare your screen next group dr mahad group sure i will unshare mm. stop share yeah stop share okay okay who is the person going to share your screen okay whatever objective you think is the best from your side you can discuss i think this one the first one culture enhanced safety okay first one is the enhanced safety culture in the company by 95% uh, okay. to to do this uh, we we need to do the gap analysis between the current situation and the 
uh, the, I mean, the, the future uh, objective implementation. Uh, after that, we need to, if we didn't have, we need to establish a safety department uh, and implement. You will, sorry, sorry, sorry. You will do the gap analysis for what? To, to, to understand uh, how to work, I mean, what, what's the current situation that we have and uh, right. the, uh, the vision that we have. I and mean, what's, what's the gap between our vision and our current situation? Okay. Uh, then uh, maybe... Uh, how you are going to do this gap analysis? Sorry, sorry, I'm just making clear myself that if this objective gap is... Analysis, okay, we need to... I mean, uh, the, our objective is to enhance the company culture. So, um, but now we need to see what, what's our current situation. Are we working good toward the um, health and safety, occupation health and safety or not? Let's assume that we, we are zero yeah, and we don't have anything. And yeah, just we have uh, the safety start at, at, at the office. Uh, so after so that- we What are you going to assess? So you will know that where are you standing now? What the things you are going to assess in this gap assessment activity? Uh, we need to see what's, what, what's kind of management that we have. What kind of management is very good. That's why they have hired you as a safety manager and you are you have to do your things. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we need uh, to be, we to need to be a bit sheet. more detailed. Yes, yes okay. please. Let's look for data sheet for um, um, any documentation previously have because I'm new to the company. So uh, this is my objective. Uh, I analyze if, every detail of document that's previously, uh, yeah, I need, uh, any See, more uh, your, I will give you the answer. Very easy answer. Okay. You will be doing the gap analysis against these eight elements of safety. Mm -hmm. Then you will come to know that where is the gap. Okay. Whenever we are going to do the gap analysis, we need to have some reference available mm -hmm. where we want to achieve. Okay. For example, I want to do gap analysis against the legal requirement. So for this purpose, I will be using the legal requirement. Okay, so mm -hmm. whenever we are going to do a, an activity which needs to decide that what is the data available or where we are standing now. So you have already written that we will be doing the implementation of these eight elements. So the first thing what we are going to do, we will do the gap analysis according to the requirement of these eight elements. And then we will come to know that we are following these elements, maybe 10%, maybe 20%, maybe 30%. And then whatever the gaps will be there, we will be making the corrective action plan and we will be implementing those gap analysis, those safety elements, right? Yes. Okay. Clear? Okay. Clear. Everyone. So this is clear. very good. See, one interesting... It's very clear, point. Mr. Anas. Thank you for this information. No problem. Yeah. I will keep you informed with all possible information. This is my value addition services to you. <laughs> good man, yeah. See, uh, another thing which is very important to know sometimes, as Dr. Maud says, that he is the first person in the company who is responsible for safety. Before in the company, there was no one who was responsible for the safety, right? So in this case, our initial objectives will be to gather the data, which is very important. To make an objective, we need to have the baseline data available. What we call it? Baseline data. Always remember. If you don't have the baseline data available, then how you are going to improve? If you don't know that where you have to go, then how you are going to proceed? Maybe you, you are living in Jeddah, you want to go to Makkah. So instead of taking right side on the highway, you will be taking left side and you will be going to Medina. Right? So baseline data is very necessary together. And this baseline data will come from this gap analysis. This baseline data will do the comes with the monitoring and measurement. For example, our previous group has made the objective that we will be working on reduce 35%. So I should ask them this question that how do you know that how many accidents do you have? The objective initially will not be the improvement directly. The objective will be when there is no system of accident reporting. So the first thing we need to make as our objective to develop the culture for accident reporting. Then we can improve the accident reporting. If you don't know that how many accidents you are going to have in last six months, then how can you say that I will improve? Right? We used to say in Arabic, Mafi kalam girgir. Okay, Mafi kida kida, lazim sida. 
so if you don't have the baseline available then how can you achieve your improvement things so before deciding of improvement objective we need to have baseline data available so this baseline as they have mentioned is it's very good they have mentioned that we will do the gap analysis this gap analysis result will give us the baseline right and then we will further proceed we will make 95% culture and this 5% who are going to remain this is basically top management and if the top, top management is not going to be trained on safety class then you can't do anything do you agree dr mark yes, you say yeah. that yes. yes so instead of this yes. 95% first work on this 5% bye anyway this is another discussion which we can speak very good next next last group can you please share your screen excellent yes. very good objective yes guys please share your screen who has written atif all right should i start or anyone anyone else uh, mr atif would you like to start or should i start uh, from one? no 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 problem start uh, you can start, start. start. all right uh, so guys uh, first of all it was a, uh, it was a really interactive uh, activity thank you for my team for putting their efforts to make it complete well uh, the first objective is minimize the ratio of accident rate and near miss ratio 10% less than 2019 well we understand uh, in quality management system and other management system standard that their uh, management system objective should be smart if i'm talking about the smart it should be specific it should be measurable it should be attainable timely bound so uh, over here we uh, we put a same formula uh, minimize the ratio of accident rate is near miss it is very much important because every if you increase if you not uh, report the near miss 100 near miss it will be equal to one accident you calling you calling the accident to your organization to please come and harm our employee our reputation of a company or harm our equipment so uh, uh, the first objective is as an organization we will set minimize the re accident rate but how much rate we need to uh, minimize that is really important and it should be very real very realistic well if you talk about uh, if you talk about that uh, uh, the accident ratio should be zero it will not realistic because uh, we we talk about uh, we always learn in the safety trainings that risk cannot be zero it can only be minimized so uh, we need to we need uh, we put 10% ratio in 2019 one very important uh, uh, the point uh, highlighted by mr anas in, in first uh, presentation that we need to specify the uh, type of injuries because uh, Uh, type of injuries is very much important because uh, uh, sometimes we uh, we decrease the uh, hand related injuries but in uh, as far as the data is concerned head related injuries are more so we need to understand the what, what where we need to hurt when we, where we need to hit where, where it matters a lot so the next step is planning so planning is very much important because uh, 45001 standard is based on pdca cycle so increase the awareness to accident and accident and near miss because we will having a we will having a meeting we have will having a training to all employees every single employees either it is he is or he or she is contractual base we will include the housekeeping staff as well in our training because companies normally uh, ignoring the housekeeping staff because housekeeping staff is a vital way to understand the hazard because they clear the tables they put themselves in, in uh, behind the table and put themselves into a area where normally people not seen because uh, if uh, if you have an electrical shock uh, accident and uh, root causes uh, rats are eating the wire of electrical uh, electrical wires so housekeeping staff will help you to understand the uh, type of uh, type of hazard are offering uh, occurring second we will increase the awareness people to uh, report the accident sometimes people are very much uh, uh, in pressure and we are very much in uh, what i can say that up uh, not uh, they are not motivated to report accident because they thought if we report the accident it, uh, that uh, that pain comes directly to themselves 
we need to uh, but as far as the safety culture is concerned we need to secure people our prime objective to secure three things material employee safety employee health and safety and the uh, third one the reputation of the company so we need to uh, take uh, in comfort zone to our employee that please report the accident report the near miss third increase the number of tool talks well tool talk uh, toolbox talk is very much important it's an informal uh, informal uh, discussion uh, start uh, between uh, before starting in every single hcc related work if you work at if you start work at height confined space anything you need uh, one safety supervisor need to uh, need, need to explain the hazards need to explain the accident which can be occur in that particular work not only the work but also uh, how to keep ourselves safe and secure to perform that duty and uh, and to keep record of every reportable election well record keeping is very much important if uh, whenever we talk about the increasing or decreasing anything in management system record and data will have will put a vital role target date december 31st because it should be a timely bond and how when to monitor since uh, it is very important uh, objective we need to evaluate the data on daily basis in safety meeting we will uh, will will talk about we will make a group of the people who are directly reporting and directly having a responsibility of safety we will have a meeting either start of the start of every day 9 am or end of the every uh, end of uh, business close of business we will talk about the daily uh, daily data uh, if any accident happened or not if any minor injury anything hcc related happened we will discuss in that in that meeting and Try, uh, trying to increase the effectivity. Excellent. And responsibility is safety officer, safety manager. Yes. Amen. Then we talk. Then we uh, uh, the second objective is very unique. No, so, I, I didn't ask you to discuss second objective. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any question in this objective? Uh, just uh, I want to ask, uh, how would he uh, calculate the accident ratio? How do you calculate the accident ratio? Yes, guys. Okay, there is a formula to uh, to calculate the accident ratio in the in the IOSH. Uh, if you are also talking about, uh, we need number of party uh, number of person in your company. For example, if you have 480 num number of person uh, divided by the national uh, national incident rate. National incident rate are as accident rate are mentioned. And uh, in organize in countrywide, uh, ma ma major countrywide website are mentioned that uh, there's that was a uh, national in, uh, accident rate. For example, 8.3 multiplied by one lakh. Then a value comes uh, after this calculation will be your accident ratio. Right, and this could be also the sector wise. National rates are also available as a sector wise. For example, how much is the accident rate for the uh, chemical sector in America, how much is the accident rate for oil and gas sector in America. So from there, uh, you will know the and data. And the most important thing that uh, when you say that as compared to 2019, 10%, which means that you are already having the data of 2019. And that's why you have made the objective that you are going to improve it by 10%. Right? And uh, increase the awareness, understand the repeated most. Okay, very good. Uh, yes, guys, any question or we proceed further now? Uh, what is the difference between reportable and non -accident? I think accidents are always you have to report the accident. There is a not a reportable or non reportable accident. Yes, accidents are always required to report, but uh, there is a lost time accident uh, where we are going to report to OSHA and there is a accident which is a minor level of accident, we are just reporting is internally, we are going to internally, make it yeah. in our company. But not you, you have to report accident internally or to yes, OSHA. Yes. Within the organization, you have, you to, have report. to report. Exactly, exactly. Okay, good. Can you please stop sharing your screen? Okay. Okay, guys, let's proceed with our, we are a bit late, no problem. We can continue. Okay, the our next topic is about direct and indirect cost. Very important thing, direct and indirect cost. As a 
safety professional we should know that what is the direct cause of accident and what is the indirect cause of accident because unfortunately we have seen that many of the safety professionals the problem comes that they don't know what is the indirect cause always remember that the management the top management they have established the company for business not for the charity right they want the output from this company if if you are doing the any uh, business if i am doing any business my first intention is to have the profit from this business and that maybe then i will say okay i will keep this this amount of percentage for the charity or i will support people or i will be making the things honest uh, halal everything this these are all the secondary intentions but whenever your company is going to establish it is being established for the purpose of business so they only understand the language of money right they only understand the language of finance and unfortunately what happened that whenever there is any accident happen or whenever the safety manager is going to meet the safety director or to meet the director operations or general manager of the company he is asking about more resources that we need more resources for the safety we need more manpower for the safety the system is still not properly maintained so we need more ppes we need so all the time we are asking for resources rather than they will be understanding the language of money if you are going to tell them that how much you have reduced in last 6 month how much you have reduced the money in last one month at the same time when the safety manager goes in the office of general director the general director says sorry we are very uh, limited budget we cannot do this now let's keep it on the next year plans right it, there these kind of arguments are there so he comes out that's why i told all the time that safety people are miskin then at, on after one hour there is a project manager or the operations manager or the production manager he goes to the office of uh, director operations and he told that if we have 1 million of budget we can increase the productivity by two more percent for example if we are making the production with efficiency of 67% we can make our efficiency 69% which is going to contribute uh, overall profitability for example 0.5 million in in next one year so he will be very happy oh so how much money you need for this yalla let's go for 1 million approve right because he he is he is going to realize that if they are going to spend 1 million and the productivity is going to increase by 2% so this 1 million they will cover in next two years and after that it's a profitability right it's a total profitability but unfortunately when the safety manager goes he is on nobody listen me this manager is not following the requirement this manager does not listen they don't send to the uh, you know safety training uh, the company you uh, the management does not provide us proper resources for the training of our people we want to hire you know third party services but you say that we don't have the resources so if you will be doing these kind of communication with the top management they are not going to listen to you one time they will listen second time they will listen but this attitude of complaint is not going to be uh, survive for long time so that's why we should know what is the direct and indirect cost the direct cost is the cost which is the medical loss or indemnity cost for example those cost which you which is needed just after the accident for example you have taken the employee to the hospital and you are going to make his bandage and you are going to take him 1 kg apple and 1 kg other fruits so this is your direct cost but on the other hand there is a very big cost which is indirect cost sometimes this direct cost also involve the loss of material right material damage uh, due to this accident if material is going to be damaged so this will also be considered as the direct cost while on the other hand indirect cost it is very higher than the direct cost around 4% five th- five times four times higher than the direct cost so this indirect cost it contains the production loss time because if for example if there is any accident in your company and those people who are the part of this team who got the accident for example you are four people working in one team and one of them get seriously injured so you as as his team member what will be your actions yes abdul jabbar 
what will you do if your colleague he gets the accident yes khwaja kya karenge aap i will tell to my superior sir to my supervisor i will inform him and make a report okay yes mr khwaja khwaja anwaruddin uh, yes sir first of all i will uh, take this issue to my higher management regarding this accident and uh, we will give him first aid and all those things okay very good so, so the interim one the interim action or the first action will be to provide him first aid to inform the safety department right yeah. but are you going to continue your work or you will go with him to the hospital sure sure we will go to or you will say hospital. yalla you are injured khalli walli go to hell <laughs> i will do my work i have to earn my money yes ibrahim will you do the same thing i know you will say yeah you are always non serious so you deserve accident now go to the hospital and i will do the work can i add something yes please yeah i will replace uh, the guy with another one just uh, like uh, if is the welder is injured i will bring another welder uh, on his side and we will give him a first aid and we will report it to the higher management or anything we will follow the procedure exactly exactly very good so the the indirect cause one of the indirect cause is the lost time the time which you are going to waste due to this accident it could be half an hour but if you consider half an hour for one team which consists of four member so what do you think four member multiply by half an hour is two hours you have wasted where you can do many activities if there is a serious injury in one of the in so there will be not only four people who will stop work maybe there are 10 people who are going to stop the work so this lost time is very necessary maybe the machine is going to stop for a couple of minutes maybe the what about the worker morale what about the worker productivity will you feel confident will you feel the productive and motivated if your other friend who was within your team he got the accident today what will be you feeling you will feeling enjoying or you will be feeling very demotivated you you will be very disheartened you will say my company does not care about us maybe today my if this friend is having accident tomorrow i will be doing the same task maybe i will also get the accident our company they don't care about us this will be the feeling right so the uh, loss of the loss of your very important person is going to make you know you as a demotivated non productive unhappy in in terms of the management and similarly your reputation nowadays everything is is on mobile you will make the video and circulate on whatsapp yalla satka jariya so everyone is will be enjoying the accident of report of your company right so what will be the reputation of this company so these all things are over indirect cause and just now imagine that what do you think that the bend the welder if if he is the only welder in your company so can you bring the welder in next 5 minutes 10 minutes 1 hour another welder you need to go through with us process maybe you will bring some temporary basis welder and then you will hire a permanent welder because doctor will tell him that you have to take the rest for 6 month so in this case what are you going to do you have to give him salary the person who is injured and you have to hire new person you are going to give him salary and this hiring is not a one hour or two hours job it will take some time right maybe if you are hiring from india pakistan then you need to have the the uh, you know visa available and nowadays the companies they are problem with the visa right so this indirect cost is too much but unfortunately we as a safety department we don't show our management that how much indirect cost has been spent on one accident and when you reduce the accident like you have made the objectives that we will be reducing the accident so the output of reducing the accident it will not be only that the number of accidents are going to be reduced but rather you should be giving them the picture that how much money they have saved due to this reduction in the accident then they will realize then they will understand oh the yes safety is also a business safety is is also going to provide us some profitability then when 
they will see that there is a profit in terms of business in the safety then they are going to give you the resources right but if they will see that you are only making the arguments argument complain 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 all the time then one time two time three times and then they will say sorry uh, we cannot do it right you have to wait for next year then we will be doing this in the next year objective so that's very important to calculate the indirect cost and this indirect cost will come from our hr department how many number of days he is 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 absent how many uh, money you have spent in the hospital how much cost do you have you given to the insurance body uh, how much time you have taken for hiring a new employee how much time you are taking for making the training of this person who is new in the company to make him expert like your other employee so this is all indirect cost we need to calculate the indirect cost so we can show us show this cost to the management and they can take that safety serious yes guys any question yes sir mr anas yes please yes i have one question now uh, the, uh, like you say before the the owner of the work or the the, the owner of the company he, he he don't want pay the money to approve the uh, to uh, yani to give the labors and everyone the safety tools and like this but uh, uh, sometime we need yani uh, yani the government force to yes, help exactly. the, the government force him so th this no no need i yani and i'm less if he wants or he doesn't want he has to give yes, no other option yeah, he must yani otherwise grama right yes if For no this, no resources said, then grama yes that that's why we are saying that uh, to have a good legal requirements available in the country is very necessary for example when the modern see mm. if you have the same problem in two visits they are going to give you grama they are going to yes. give you plan sometime 35000 real sometime 50000 real sometime they say mm. 5% of your all employee salary so you will know that how much is the cost okay hey. so these are all factors which are necessary okay guys clear direct and indirect cost any question That's okay. all. Good. So, what are the hazards, as defined by OSHA? Hazard or khatar, right? OSHA usually define the hazard as a danger which threatens physical harm, right? Physical harm to the employees. And if we expand this definition more, unsafe workplace condition or practice, right? Unsafe workplace condition or the practice that could cause an injury or illness. What is the difference between injury and illness? Yes, Doctor Mar. Injury and ill health or illness. Yeah, the two. Injury and illness. Yes, difference between. Well, this is a big question and it's a controversial topic actually. <laughs> uh, What is the difference between injury and illness? So. Or uh, ill health. Let's uh, yeah, say it uh, in simple words. Um, injury uh, uh, it could happen due to I mean an, an out uh, an out an out source pro hazardous problem or due to an underlying uh, illness. Okay, that's what caused the injury. Okay, illness is uh, yeah, considered as a physiological change in in, in our body. Okay. Yes, Mudar sir. Good, good, good. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, injury sir. is uh, if someone has uh, broken his arm, it's injury. And if someone is uh, someone is having a fever or anything else, uh, it's uh, illness. Okay. See, in simple words, just to make the differentiate, because we are. Mr. Safe. Anas, I think the injury is. physical hazards physical uh, physical very good hazards. excellent Ooh. and it is more like like uh, more uh, nafsi moral uh, moral hazards i think like uh, who are you right? i i can't see marwan you are saying this yeah yeah okay uh, you have told the correct that what is the injury it's a physical harm for example physical. if you will get injury right you, you will get bleeding everyone can see there is a bleeding yes. 
then everyone will ask you salama salama oh, what happened right so, injury a small injury in your finger cut by knife or cut by blade okay when they see bandage oh everyone will ask you this is our injury okay but what about the problem which you are going to have with the noise if i keep you in a room where there is a lot of noise what will happen with you if i ask you i will be ick yes exactly if i ask you to carry this cement bags on your back for next 2 hours what will happen with your back back pain Back right. pain or yeah, back pain or some injury. Uh, back, some... back injuries, exactly, exactly. Back yeah. ill health. If I'm ill your health. manager, and I'm going to give you too much headache all the time, what Depression. will happen? <laughs> Depression. Depression, stress. Yes. If I'm your, if you, I'm your top management. I and I, I give you too much work, too much work, too much work all the time. So you will be feeling stress when you go home. Then start calling. Do this. Do this. Do this. I I need this report by today, class. Okay, <laughs> so this is injury or ill health. Ill health. Right. Ill health. So Ill health. when we are dealing with the safety, that's why there is health and safety. It's not only safety. Before, twenty five years ago, the companies, the people, they have well aware about the safety. they focus is on only on the safety issues safety issues in oil and gas safety is like 50 years old it's not the new concept right due to their right. Uh, critical criticality of the operation it is very old concept for them but they don't focus on the health but now the new concept which comes from last 15 years that we need to focus on the health issues as well if you are eating something which can cause you poison if this fruit is rotten if this food is rotten which you are going to take you will not get injury right yes this corona is not going to cause you injury right yes so yes. when we are dealing with health and safety we need to focus on injury we need to focus on ill health that's why this is hs osha o occupational safety and health that's why we have hsc department health safety environment department that's why we have ehs department right that's why we have health and safety department that's why we are hsq health safety environment quality that's why we have qhsc departments those so in one department you can merge many you know requirements together so physical harm is the injury right and those which can impact on our health is about ill health or illness right if you have headache then you are having ill health issues so the hazard may be an object for example tool equipment machinery material or a person when distracted mentally and physically incapable how a person can be a hazard yes nizam how a person can be hazard nizam available Okay, Mr. Naim, how a person can be hazard? Any example? Any extra person in the job site? He may be hazard, like in a lifting activity, other than the rigor. Okay. Any other He example? Maybe the cause of. Atif, Atif, any other example? Yes, Afak, any example? over there yes guys um i can if i can uh, answer this one uh, any person who is maybe some he has some uh, family emergency or anything and he still came to work and he's kind of distracted like what's going on back home and he's working he is a potential any you know, hazard to himself and to other person if he is working on a he is doing welding or he is cutting or grinding something and he has thoughts about something else and he is working for example he is a crane driver he is a forklift driver 
right yes 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 because there are some real life occurrences ex accidents happen like this because that operator crane operator was not uh, you know fully focused and he made Very a mistake good. excellent so uh, while you are driving a car and you are talking on mobile phone what do you think very common example very common example and it is a uh, uh, texting and driving especially exactly. right so distracted person can have many and there was an accident in a chemical plant for for uh, i i know about this thing an uh, untrained person can be a hazard untrained person exactly untrained person is he could be a hazard right if you yes. if he doesn't know how to work on height and you are going to send him ja mera bachcha kuch nahi hota khair so what will happen to him right so right. this will be a hazard for others similarly if an operator is absent and you have asked his helper to perform this activity of operator because he was an assistant operator or the helper with the operator for last one year so don't think that he will be working like an operator right until less he is qualified so uh, one accident uh, happened in a chemical plant where two workers were involved in a shift and the batch was about to ready it was a night shift so at the time of fajr one of the operator told that uh, i'm going for prayer so by the time you just take care because uh, we are on the manual mode and uh, the batch is going to be ready so that right. person he went to the that operator he went for the sala and the other person was in the control room unfortunately or fortunately whatever you say that operator who was in the control room you know at the time of fajr you are more sleepy than any other time right yes and yes if there is air condition and nobody is there silence so he fall in sleep at that time. and oh. then the batch was over spilled and it was a very expensive chemical so they have lost too much uh, you know in terms of budget but alhamdulillah there was no such accident so when they did the root cause analysis it came to know that the one of the operator has gone to the sala and the other operator he gone to sleep so what do you think now if you are a manager what will you do i'll fire the operator yes as a manager i would uh, i would change their shift timings so i should have some you know 6 6 hour shift rather than 9 hour shift because i have to assess that how and many then hours if, then then if i am your manager and you will make 6 hour shift then i will say thank you so much if we can have another manager <laughs> sure sure But, yes, Shazim. Uh, yeah. What will you do, yes. Shazim? Quick. I think timing will be repeated timing will be. Same yes, time. Mr. Rushdi. Okay, okay, Rushdi. Yes. Uh, I will validate uh, all the time two persons shall be available. If one person will go for any reason, some replacement shall be available. This is the best practice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Replacement. 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 Yes. so in fact when they did the root cause analysis it came to know that the operator who fallen in sleep his father was hospitalized for last 3 days and he has applied for vacations many time with his manager but the manager told that we don't have any replacement available and we need to have two persons available in the shift so no problem you can come here and you can sleep but you have to be available so the other partner will be with you don't worry about this thing so because he used to go in the daytime his he used to go to the hospital and in the night time he was at work and his brother was going to the hospital because of the hospitalization case of his father so this distracted person has made the accident right and right. the root cause comes that his again the responsible person is the is his manager rather than this worker because he already Uh, give him the application three times and he rejected okay anyway it takes a hazard and exposure to get accident what does it mean Ex exposure right the car is coming exposed and hazard high speed car or fast car and you will get exposed thus accident right if you are sitting here and a bulb is going to fall and if you don't have much hair like me then you will get major accident but if you have more hair then you will have 
less accident, minor injury, right? You cannot use your hair as a helmet. Sir, फिर भी फर्क पड़ता है ना ये देखें, ज़्यादा जोर से लगेगी हम. Okay, so that's why I I put this picture of helmet now. How many ways of hazard identification? How can we identify the hazard? The first thing is to go for observation. Yes, go and check what's going on with your common sense. If you have the common sense, just go and see what what's going on. By when you are going to see, you will find many hazards, right? If you have the sense available, so when you are going to see, you will find many unsafe condition, unsafe acts. Then ask, survey, ask the people about the past accidents. What kind of hazards are there? What kind of accident they have in their past? And then worker interview. Very important. You can do the worker interview in terms of groups. Okay, ask them about their relevant information about the safety. So you will get many insights from the workers. Walk around inspection. Go and check. What is the difference between inspection and observation? Any idea? Yes, Rushdi. Since you are inspector, so you will be knowing this. Inspection. Uh, this is the specific activity. I mean, for specific item, I am doing inspection, and I am using reference also to judge if this is within tolerance or out of tolerance. Some acceptance criteria shall be there. But observation, this is during surveillance. I can observe what the improper practice or improper material, whatever. I can observe this during my surveillance. Okay, very good. So the observation is the random checking, okay, without any specific. But when we have the inspection, we need to have certain standard, certain requirement, certain procedure, maybe legal requirement, maybe your company own procedures. So always remember that inspection will be carried out most of the time. When we do the inspection, we make we use the checklist, right? We use the checklist. so yes. we can gauge that what is the requirement we we make the decision if the things are correct or incorrect but in observation you are doing by your own experience and your knowledge so this is a simple difference then you will see the document review what document are you going to see to know about the hazards yes ibrahim musa uh, the checklist and uh, uh, the injury form and what we like we do in uh, homework this I, i review all the document i have related with uh, injuries uh, hazard uh, accident happened in the company the last month last year very last good. Month, like very good. excellent we are going to review the accident reports we are going to review the risk assessment we are going to see the risk speak about report. risk assessment yes we are going to see the risk assessment we are going to see the at last audit results we are going to see the uh, internal or external or the client audits result uh, inspections report so this is very good we are going to review this okay very quick now what is the hierarchy of control when you identify the hazard okay now you have to control this hazard this is the simple so while we are going to control the hazard don't start with the ppe most of the time when there is a hazard we we used to say okay wear safety shoes wear the safety gloves rather than to start with the elimination so what is the correct sequence we call it hierarchy of controls so hierarchy of control is the first try to eliminate this hazard for example if you have a generator which is producing high noise try to eliminate the generator bring any other alternate but sometimes you say that since it is our asset in the company and we don't have any alternate available or we cannot for example you are working a site where there is no electricity available there is no saudi kaharba available so what will you do definitely you are going to use the generator or then if you cannot you if you are not be able to eliminate this hazard then substitute for example elimination could also be like you are using the solar panel you are using some other means right substitution bring the generator which has less noise nowadays less noise generators are available so you can substitute the, this existing generator or you can to have the less noise and then we have engineering control if substitution is not possible then go for the engineering control 
for example install canopy uh, make the preventive maintenance on time you know due to improper maintenance or uh, non maintenance there is a lot of noise which is being produced from the bearings from the nuts and bolts or so lubrication is not done maintenance is not done filter are not clean so it will be causing more noise so we will be going for engineering control and if engineering controls are not possible or we think that engineering control are not enough then we will be going for administrative control and when we say administrative control it means that provide the signage isolate the source of hazard in engineering control we are working on the source right in administrative control we are going to isolate for example if a person is distracted right how you are going to apply engineering control on him we used to say that i will tighten your screw right? <laughs> right right so you are applying engineering control you are going to make a counseling session with him you are going to ask him what's your problem then you are trying to solve so this is engineering control administrative control yalla someone having covid send him to quarantine send him to quarantine isolate yes. Isolate. Yes. you cannot work on the you cannot work on the source now go for the administrative control so have you seen sometime on the companies on the on the on the control room or on the generator room there is written only authorized persons are allowed yes yes that, authorized that's why person some companies they have the system for cards from besma everyone cannot go everywhere you have the limited authority right so these right. are all administrative controls permit to work is our administrative control so yes. if the administrative controls are still insufficient then we will go for the ppes then provide them okay. safety shoes right then provide them whatever the ppes requirement is there provide them this air muff so they can protect themselves always That's remember perfect. it is not a necessary requirement that we will be applying one control at one time no you can apply more than one control at one time for example you will be taking the engineering control by maintenance purpose by maintaining the the source and then you will say we will still we need to isolate we will keep this generator <coughs> away from our area so the the people who are working on site they will be not be have, uh, not be able to have more noise but at the same time if someone has to go for example generator operator will go there they have to take the reading every hour so he will go and check the reading so he will be using ppes right but the other people since the generator is now moved to another area they are not being exposed to this so mr anas yes please excuse me the first two point wallah i'm not understand very well elimination <laughs> remove this hazard khalas no need for generator okay mm. you saw the garba okay Aye. then substitution if you cannot remove this hazard because you are working on remote site so you cannot bring the saudi kaharba so what are you going to do substitute bring the generator which produce less noise by design less okay? noise and energy efficient exactly instead of bringing china bring german <laughs> sure sure but it is very expensive we cannot yes. substitute it but this expensive cost well yeah exactly. Agreed. You pass to to engineering control. Make yeah, the signs. We to, here when we are going to take the decision, action. exactly. When we are going to take the decision, we are going to use the terminology reasonable, applicable. So we will see if the cost of generator is important or the health of our people are important, right? So on the basis of this, we will take the decision. So elimination, substitution. If eighty percent of the time from the companies, you cannot. apply elimination control it's very rare because companies they already have infrastructure available they already have spent too much money for their machinery and equipment and infrastructure so if you will tell your management that uh, no need for this machine it's producing lot of noise so we should remove this machine so your manager will say it is very easy for me to remove you from the company rather than to remove this machine right so elimination substitution engineering control administrative control and PPE, ppes PPE. right ppes so ppes are personal protective equipment for example we can see mr ibrahim he is using ppes air muff so he cannot listen me right right 
at phones any question no that's okay okay very good let's have uh, another activity for the risk assessment i will show you the picture and you are uh, remember i shared one of the format in the group about the risk assessment hmm. uh, yes okay good so you will be using the same format uh yes here is the form so you are going this is not the perfect format for the risk assessment but since risk assessment as i told you it is not the part of our osha course risk assessment is being discussed in detail in iosh course so where you have three chapters for risk assessment only so very detailed activity is being done in iosh course but here we will be just writing that what is the hazard who might be harm for example human injury property damage how people might be harmed maybe major injury minor injury fatality what are the existing control the controls which are available now at the moment and what do you think that what are the additional controls can be applied okay so i am going to share the picture and you will be identifying at least three hazards from this picture okay okay identify how many hazards three 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 hazards okay three 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 uh, but it would be three difficult hazards. to share here because when you will be working on the group so i will i will share in the whatsapp so you can download this file okay that sure. will be much better because you will be working in the group yeah i am going to make your group again the same group start working in your group three hazards only fast यार वो नेटवर्क नहीं है हाँ 
ये है लेदर ये है लेदर ये इसको ले क्या दीवार गिरा रहा है अब दीवार गिरेगी तो इसके पास आएगा सामान और ये वापस हो जाएगा इधर सिलेंडर उसके हाथ में जो लगेगा तो ये ब्लास्ट हो जाएगा ये जो ट्रैक्टर है ये इस तरफ जा रहा है ना ये इस तरफ आ रहा है और वो काम कर रहे हैं वर्कर दिखना है ना दिखना है ना कहा से लिखे कैसे लिखे भाई शाहिद तुम किधर हो नजर में यही हो वो ऑप्शन ही नहीं आ रहा लिखने का मैं कहा टाइप कर रहा हूँ यार वो उसका ऑप्शन नहीं है तुम्हारे पास नहीं है नहीं ऑप्शन नहीं आया ना शेयर स्क्रीन का ऑप्शन आया था मेरे पास नहीं शेयर स्क्रीन की बात नहीं कर रहा मैं तुम किसी ग्रुप में नहीं हो ब्रेकआउट में मेरे ख्याल से मैं नहीं हूँ ग्रुप में अभी तो मैंने तो मैं डाला था एक सेकेंड तुम ग्रुप टू में आ रहे हो यार देखो तुम्हारे पास विंडो नहीं आई ब्रेकआउट की मरवान के साथ हूँ क्या मैं हैं हाँ मरवान के पास हाँ हाँ तुमने दो जगह पे लॉगिन किया भाई क्या हाँ मैंने दो जगह पे लॉगिन किया हुआ है मेरे लैपटॉप पे आवाज नहीं आ रही तो मैं लैपटॉप से अलग किया मोबाइल में अलग किया हुआ है हाँ तो ठीक है फिर दूसरी जगह से भी वही वाला ग्रुप ज्वाइन कर लो ना दोनों जगह से एक ही ग्रुप ज्वाइन करो फिर देखो देखो मैं जब तक वजू करके आऊँ यार फिर तुम आज नमाज पढ़ने का नमाज पढ़ने का कह रहे तो मरवान के साथ हूँ मगर मरवान के उसमें आ ही नहीं रहा अगर मरवान मरवान क्या हुआ ऐसा करो तुम दोबारा से ज्वाइन करो इसको जिस पे अभी तुम हो ना उस वाली डिवाइस को छोड़ के दोबारा से ज्वाइन अब लेकिन छोड़ दो बल्कि अब ग्रुप बन गया अब कुछ नहीं हो सकता अब तुम्हें इंतजार करना पड़ेगा वापस जब ग्रुप खत्म होंगे तो तुम एंटर हो सकते हो तुम व्हाट्सएप पे देखो ना मैंने पिक्चर दी है उसको डाउनलोड करके खुद ही से सोल्व करना शुरू करता हूँ
yes guys so who is going to start let's start with mr uh, muad group dr muad okay summer one engineer for one okay. yes engineer marwan marwan yes 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 i am here i am here okay <laughs> <laughs> we notify five hazards from this photo. The first one, there is no senior in the workplace, in this construction workplace. Okay. How, how who, who might be harmed? Anyone in this site? The worker, the driver, the visitor, for example. And how might be people harmed? There is a minor and two major injuries, for example, physically injuries, for example, uh, from the noise of this uh, track, the uh, well, existing control, there is not available, just a PPD, personal protective equipment, helmet and uh, safety shoes, that's what I see here in this picture. The second hazard, the door of the track is open. So how we harm the driver? Will be fall, can be can be fault this driver. Existing control not available, and additional control is elimination. For example, to close this door immediately. And third hazard is heavy load. We can can we can see uh, the the worker push this. Uh, I don't know what these guys. <laughs> it's very heavy. Yeah, it's very hard. So who might be harmed? All the employee, the worker. And uh, who might be harmed? Uh, back strain, Adam, and jewels. Uh, addition controls is administrative and awareness, for example, and making the training to the working dog for don't uh, push any heavy blow, for example. Okay. And uh, the bus, last bus, 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 bus. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Any any guys question? Anyone? Do you think this is a, these are all correct hazards? See, let's talk about first hazard. There is no signage in the workplace. So yeah, no signage is a hazard. If there is no signage, then what will be the injury? Something is going to fall on you if there is no signage. For to example, have, the... Listen, listen. listen. Okay. To have no mm -hmm. signage is the control, which is not applied. But it is not the hazard. To mm -hmm. have the signages is the control, is the administrative control, right? It is not mm -hmm. the hazard. The hazard will be the activity which is going to carry out. Okay. 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 So it might okay. be possible that there is working at height going on. There is uh, any other construction activities going on where there is a chance that something will fall on their head. So mm -hmm. we need to identify that hazard, which is an activity, which is a condition. Right? It could be an activity, it could be an infrastructure, it could be a human, no problem. Mm -hmm. So signages mm -hmm. is not the hazard, the activity mm -hmm. will be hazard. And signages is the our existing okay. control or the additional control, what we are going to apply, right? Okay, okay. Okay, very good. good. Excellent. Next group. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, guys. Who is the next group? Afak, uh, are you going to share? Yeah, sure. Uh, my group member, please share the screen. So, any other will be speaking now. This works. Okay. Okay. Mr. Atif or Mudassir, please uh, explain. Okay. Uh, we have uh, three hazards. The first one uh, no safe access. Uh, who may be harmed? Uh, there are two workers. Uh, how many people uh, be harmed? Sleep and trip, falls in uh, rocks, exist in a uh, control, there are uh, provide proper access uh, and additional uh, control, uh, barricade uh, the site. 
This is the, the first one. Right, the, right. The second uh, hazard, uh, manual handling, gas cylinder. Uh, there are uh, one worker who is uh, handling uh, blast fatal engineer. Uh, existing control uh, are not available. Right. Additional, additional controls uh, use the trolley for cylinder moment. Very good. The third one uh, is uh, housekeeping. Uh, poor housekeeping observed. Uh, who may be harmed? There are uh, three workers side. They may harm. Uh, minor accident can be take place. Existing control uh, are not available. Uh, and uh, additional controls, proper housekeeping on a daily basis. Very good, excellent. Yes, guys, any question? So my, my question is that manual handling, when you are doing the manual handling of cylinder and you have written as blast as one of the hazard. Okay, so yes. what do you think when, if there is a blast on site, only one person is going to be die? So everyone problem. is going to heaven. Everyone, everyone, everyone. Right. So then you need to write more persons on the second okay. column. One per person who is handling, he will have the ergonomic issues, right? Okay. Yeah. But okay. when we write the blast, there will be many persons who are going to defect. Okay. So okay. it might be possible. Yes. The point is, it might be possible with one hazard, you will find two, three issues. This could be a injury issue. This could be a ill health issue. So you will define them separately. No problem. Okay. Don't mix each other. Similarly, when you are going to apply the control use of trolley for cylinder movement, this is for the handling part. What about the hazard of blast? How you are going to avoid this hazard? What is the control to avoid the, haz the blast hazard? You will use the cylinder which is inspected exactly. in a good condition. Right? Yes. You will secure the cylinder by means of chain if you are using the trolley. So it is not going to fall. You are not going to keep the cylinder as upward direction on the ground directly. It might be possible it will fall. So the thing is when you have one hazard and multiple effects are possible, we will be writing them into different, different. Uh, yes. Clear? Okay. Clear. Yeah, clear. Thank you. Thank you for the explanation. Okay, thank you. Next. Next, next. Who is that? I think so. It's my it's my group. Yes, Ibrahim group, Hussein group. Yes. Okay, let me just share the screen. So last time, who described in your group? Actually, I, think, I was the one to to describe this time. Last time. Some, some other should be described. Sure. We sure. want to hear everyone. Sure. Mr. Ibrahim, let's Can go. Can you share the screen, please? Yeah. Is it is it showing now? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, Ibrahim. Your mic is silent. Oh, now you hear me? Yes, very yes. good. Okay, okay. Now, uh, the first hazard is the gas cylinder is heavy load. So the worker, uh, yani gas cylinder heavy load, uh, who's uh, maybe harm the worker, the equipment crane, because maybe it's fall or explode or like this. Type how uh, the people be harmed by cylinder falling on some feet by feeling uh, the regulator of the cylinder maybe it's broke or uh, any explosion or like this. So uh, existing control, yani uh, if we uh, arrange the BBE for the labors and yani uh, if we can make uh, or yani bring a trolley and it's a safe trolley to labors mm -hmm. right. and uh, in additional control yani uh, if if we uh, we can yani uh, uh, 
increase the awareness for the laborers and uh, يعني train him in the, uh, and uh, uh, يعني uh, we tell them this what we do it's wrong and like this and we need to uh, fill the cylinder good and like this. Okay. So the طيب the second it's heavy equipment noise. The mm -hmm. book lane noise is very uh, high and uh, who's the people's harm? The worker. And uh, they have any problem in uh, her ears or uh, like this because the noise. So the existing control uh, by arrange the BBE to the labors and uh, mm, additional control if we can uh, يعني make engineering control by uh, make the maintenance to the uh, book lane and uh, يعني something like this. Okay. Very good, very good. The third, uh, if you complete. No problem, no, 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 just thank you, thank you. Okay guys, any question in this exercise? No question, good exercise. Only one question, Yanni. Only one question I have. For the yes, previous, please. For the previous slide was uh, one hazard for glass team, okay? And the existing control they mentioned not applicable. Uh, I just a question: if if the hazard, uh, and it is urgent and immediate hazard like this, we have to take immediate action also, not uh, not only future action. Just uh, I don't. Yeah, yeah. This so for example, the control which they have mentioned here, these these are our immediate actions. But sometimes, see what happened that. This risk assessment, always remember, it will be done at the time of planning, before starting of the task. If you are doing this activity when you have already studied a task, now it is late. You are already late class. There could be accident is possible. So whenever we are going to fill the risk assessment, it is a part of our planning phase, not the execution. Right. Phase. So we are going to take all possible actions. Sometimes you are also filling the permit to work. This permit risk assessment is also a part of permit to work. Why this is attached with the permit to work? Because these both are the planning part, right? And you make sure that before starting of activity, we should have all controls available, right? Okay, guys, right. let's have five minutes break and then we will continue. Inshallah, we will try to finish by something 8.30, 8.40, something like that. Okay? Sure, sure. There is Salah, there is Salah, Salah, more than five, for example. <laughs> Please. 10, 10, 10 would be okay. 10, 15 minutes. 10, 10, yeah, yeah, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. When I say five, you okay. will take 10 minutes. That's why I'm saying five. Okay. Sure. sure. Okay. I'm, I'm trainer. I know you. <laughs> sure, sure.
Yes, guys, available. Yes, Abdul Jabbar, how are you? Fine, sir. Alhamdulillah. Yes, others available or not available? Available. Uh, the other is still praying. Yes. They will pray Maghrib, Isha, Fajr all together now. Oh. <laughs> Sir, you're a, you're a tablig, tablig, tablig. Kef tablig. Every Muslim is tablig. No, 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 because in our country, too much uh, Pakistan, Indian, Bangladesh, they go there for Johor, Stima. In our country, in Manila, Golden Mosque. Yes, yes, yes. Too much. And the one famous uh, ulama, his name uh, Maulana Tariq Jamil. Yes, he's, mashallah, very good alim. Yeah. Can, can, you, can you see the screen? Can you see the screen? Yeah, it's clear. Yes, sir. Can you hear the sound? Yeah. Yes, sure. we can see. Yes. No, about the sound. Can you hear the sound as well? No, it is yes, yes. No. Yes. No, no. No sound only. No sound. Okay. Okay. Uh, check now. Is it okay now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sound. The sound is okay, but the video, no. We can't see the video. We listen to the sound only. Just a minute. Is it okay now? It's okay. Yes, yeah, okay. This is your company where you used to go every day. What is the hazard here? No, it's safety, it's safety. 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 It's going to take the Panadol or any kind of tablets which are going to relieve you with headache. It will come in they drowsiness. They call you drowsiness. Exactly. Yes. Ah. yes. So never take these kind of tablets when you are planning to drive. Thank <laughs> you. 
ko sa accident. Guys, clear about the hazards. Yeah. Clear. Clear. Very good. Very good. Let's start our next topic. Can you see the slides? Not yet. Not yet. Why not yet? Ah, okay. Now, now we see the slides. It's okay. Okay, good. So our next topic is about walking and working surface, which is module number three of our OSHA 30 hours course. Walking and working surface are always important for us wherever we are working. in our company wherever we are doing our activities it could be a walking surface we could work at height we can work in confined space we can work in where the excavations are going on even on the same floor when you are working with ladders or the scaffold you will be considered as working at height so walking and working surfaces are very common in any kind of industry and we have too many accidents due to walking and working surfaces all the time uh, which can cause you not only the minor injuries but also the major injuries and also the health issues uh, for example uh, you will have the the issues with regards to poisonous gas or poisonous atmosphere uh, for example injuries to your uh, strains problem sprains problem cuts and bruises so that's why it is very important to protect our people while they are working so that's why we are going to discuss this topic this 29 cfr is 1910 section number 22 this 29 cfr is the also the code of osha 30 hour osha journal industry which is the full code is yesterday we discussed about 110 but the full code when you are going to write on the google or you are going to write on the osha website you should write 29 cfr 1910 and this section number 22 it discuss about housekeeping aisles passages covers and guard rails loading and floor walls so first topic is about housekeeping the osha standards require you to maintain the housekeeping up to the mark at all the time right we have seen that 36% of the accidents overall accidents are happen due to the bed housekeeping the fire accidents are majorly causing due to the bed housekeeping in at your work site if you have a good housekeeping maintain on on site uh, you are when we say housekeeping it doesn't mean only the cleanliness sometimes we see, we think that when we are cleaning something it is housekeeping but rather housekeeping is more than the cleanliness housekeeping is keep the things at their places organize the things set the things right cleaning is also a part of housekeeping but cleaning is not only the housekeeping so write for tomorrow write your assignment for tomorrow there is a terminology called 5s 5 in words 5 okay not in english f i v e not only 5 s it's a japanese theory which gives you the idea about the whole housekeeping what is housekeeping okay what you need to win 5s means the first s is shine sort set right so what is shine shine means to clean set in order always organize your things when you see your mobile as 
sometimes we what we are going to do we are going to delete our whatsapp pictures and videos because there is too much mess and due to which there is lot of space which is going to be happen set in order shine right uh, sustain so you are going to write about what is 5s and also search on google the checklist for 5s audit checklist for 5 less 5s audit clear clear yes khwaja clear rushdi yes sir clear Very clear good. okay anwar yes, sorry anwar no uh, naim so there are two things related to 5s the first thing is to search about what is 5s okay it's very common it's a japanese uh theory like they have some other things and then find out the checklist for 5s audit i used to say to my clients that before starting the safety in your company for example you decide that we are going for iso 45001 standard i say stop don't go directly the first thing you should maintain for next one month two month three months is to start the activity of 5s in your company have you seen sometime when you are going in the workshop of a company you will find very old spare parts very old motors machinery two fans outside of workshop so whoever is going to pass the workshop he will think they are very busy and since last 5 years you will find these machine inside the workshop and whenever you ask them please do this activity for us they say oh, oh we are very busy first we will finish our activities then we will come to you so these activities these workshops these stores these warehouses they need to have a 5s activity we have many expired chemical available in our warehouse we have many expired material available in our warehouse useless sometimes you will find that their finished product is less than the expired material right so it's useless creating more hazards the more material you will have which means the more hazards you will have so the first thing what we need to do in our companies we need to start the 5s activity and the 5s activity you will be doing by by forming the team of 5s okay 5s teams from each department you will make 5s teams with 3 3 4 4 members you will train them provide them the awareness about 5s and assign them the task yalla let's start 5s in your department so then you will find that if you see this picture in the slide that marking is available identification is available everything is good right according to the need so which means that they are now following the 5s and you will find that there is too much garbage from each department you will see even i give you simple example of your own room if you see your own room okay you will find many items are useless in this room right if you see your computer desktop you will find many files which you don't need now but they are still on your desktop i used to do the 5s activity for my laptop all the time right because many times you are downloading 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 after some time your downloading files are too much and sometime you download multiple times the same file so 5s we need to apply in all aspects of life not only in our companies but also on yourself also in your home so that's why i am requesting you to download the 5s and start reading about 5s so this is the first step towards safety and now uh, this 5s concept those companies who have adopted before japanese companies they have now concept of 6s and the 6s is basically the safety right so when you will applying all these 5s so the 6s which is going to come is the safety so we need to then protect our people we need to protect our property uh, with any kind of hazards clear 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 okay yes. now there are some definitions which we need to understand for example ground floor gra guarding floor and wall opening the standard osha standard defined floor hole as an opening measuring less than 12 inches but more than 1 inch right if you see that there is a hole in the wall there is a hole which is more than 12 inches but more than uh, uh, less than 12 inches but more than 1 inch so if there is a hole in a wall we in the floor consider this is your floor right when we say 1 inch which means that a person is not going to be fall 
even from the six inch, a person is not going to fall. Can you see this? This shoes in my slide. This person yes. having the boots. So you can see that this is around ten inch or twelve inch. Yes. Floor hole. Yes. So from here, yes. a person is not going to fall. A person can get the trip accident. He can get trip, but not the falling. Because this is less than twelve or maximum the twelve. But if it is more than twelve inches. then what will happen for example your uh, have you seen the drain channels those you will fall maybe yes yes yes, yes. Right? yes. drain channels so if you see the drain channel those we are which are drainage caps or covers these are more than 12 inches so from where a person can fall right right so these are the things which we need to understand all the holes are holes right but when we are a safety officer when we are a safety engineer we should be using the technical terminologies so whenever maybe you have the the in your accident report in your inspection code you you might use these kind of words so that's why you should know that what osha is saying about this is so floor hole less than 12 inch floor opening more than 12 inch platform wherever you are working for example if you are working on 20th floor of a building so what will be your platform are you working at height or are you working at platform if your office is on 20th floor of a building platform okay so when we need to work on platform on 20th floor so do you wear safety belt when you are sitting in your office if you know no 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 then you are saying this is platform ah oh, okay you so it is a, uh, what can we say what can we say then platform is only the space wherever you are working right okay. which is elevated okay. right. above the ground when we are right. at 20th floor my my ground is my 20th floor and when floor. you are having a table right yeah. which is yeah. above the ground this is your platform platform which is above the house for example this is our ground and we are above the ground so maybe we are on the ladder maybe we are on the table maybe we are on the scaffold these are all our platforms right so the standard required different precautions while you are working at platform on when you are working 6 feet above the platform then you need to wear the safety belt and if you are working more than 10 feet of your ground floor you need to have the safety harness available and in this case if your platform you need to have the uh guard rails available as well sorry uh, mr anas uh, i have a question yes yeah uh, what you said about uh, if we, if uh, our office is on uh, 20th floor of uh, building so is it a platform mm, no. your office is on 20th floor so for for you it is ground but if you are yeah. using any ladder in your office if you mm. are using any scaffolding in your office then this will be your platform right okay. thank you which is above the ground yeah i got it. so wall hole uh, an opening less than 30 inches for example this is my wall and this is less than 20 inches so in this case kidhar gaya bhai mera haath nazar hi nahi aa so in this case we have our wall hole right and yeah. if it is at least 30 inches wall opening same the case with like floor hole and floor opening whenever we have hole it's small whenever we have opening it means it's big right so right. floor hole 12 inches and floor opening more than 12 inches wall hole less than 30 inches and wall opening more than 30 inches and 18 inches wide because if the wall opening is like more than 30 inches it might be possible that if you are working on the corner of the wall you can fall right for example we will see this example here okay now when you are required to protect your floor how you are going to protect them when they are working on the platform so a standard railing you know the railing 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 this is the railing right can you see in the picture the railing yes guard yes. rail yes this this is our normal railing okay when you are working on height so there is called a standard railing which is 42 inches from the ground 
right? Because 42 inch means that around uh, four feet. So if you have four feet of guardrail available, but then you are not going to fall, right? This guardrail will protect you or this railing will protect you. Or in our Desi language, we call it grill lagado. So this grill is going to save you, right? From the ground, 42 inch. But in our previous slide, we have seen that the ground opening is, uh, sorry, the wall opening is 30 inches. And we are making the railing from 42 inch. So what should we do now? We need to install another, we call it mid rail, which is on 21 inches from the ground. Total is the 42 and then one more in between. So because which is between 42 and the ground 21. So on 21, we need to install another because if it will be more than 30, still a person can fall. So you can see this example here. This is our mid rail, right? This is our mid rail. Up to here, it is 42 inch. And up to here, this is mid rail. And then this is the standard rail. And then we need to have the, what we need to have, we need to have a tow board. What is tow board? Any idea? Tow board. Tow board yeah. is a, a plank board which is used to prevent material falling. Very good. Very good. Tow board is the board which is being used. It could be made up of wood or it could be made up of checker plate if it could be made up of iron. No problem. It is a board which is going to protect the material from falling because yeah, now you are having 21 inches only. So in from 21 inches, human cannot fall, right? If you are not a baby. But the main thing is maybe you are working at 30 feet height and you are having loose spanner, screwdriver, nuts and bolts. So what do you think if a nut of one inch is going to be fall from 30 feet or from 100 feet? Will it be lesser than a bullet? It the will more be height, like which a bullet. The it more height, be. which means more pressure. Yeah. More, right? more, more so force, when, more acceleration for the nut. Exactly. So when we have working at height, right, we need to consider this factor. And that's why we are going to install top rail, mid rail and tow board. So the people who are going from the ground, they should be safe. Right? Clear? Any problem? Mafi Mushkila? Clear. It is clear. Mr. Okay. Anas, I don't understand the toe board. Exactly. Toe board. Toe board. You have toe in your foot? What meaning toe? Toe. T O E. Toe. Head, shoulder, knees, and toe. My daughter, she used to hear. To listen this point. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I know. Shoulder, knees, and toe, <laughs> knees, and toe. Now you get the idea? So. Yes, I have it. <laughs> okay. Alhamdulillah. 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 Okay. So to avoid falling something, we, for example, this is your ground. Can you see my hand? This is your ground. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to avoid falling anything, we are going to install a, this is the toe board, four inch from the ground. Mm -hmm. Why? So any loose item, which is on the surface, it is not going to fall because there is a support, right? This is like the full on the full surface. This is the full surface and you have mm -hmm. the toe board available here. So what will happen mm -hmm. if you will touch anything from your foot, for example, this is the pen and this is our, by sometimes in virtual training. It, okay. So this is your ground, right? platform. Sorry, this is your platform. This is your screwdriver. You are working mm -hmm. at 100 feet height. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it might be possible your screwdriver will get rotate, 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 rotate and fall. And when it's going to fall on someone head, having no hair, what will happen? Okay. Right? So but if I install toe board here, this is my toe board. See my toe board four inches. So mm -hmm. what do you think now this, this screwdriver is going to fall or no? Because here no. there is a fixing. 
fixing oh, the when the yeah. screw driver will come here it is not going to be fault it is not going to be fault but if i remove okay. the tow board it is going to be fault yeah. right right clear clear good 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 alhamdulillah so ha huh. so we have standard railing 42 inch mid rail for 21 inch and tow board for 4 inch right so this is the protection when we are working on the platform okay very good tow board picture he already shared on the whatsapp but don't see now you can see later otherwise you will start reading other messages as well for your friends or others okay stairways railing and guards on stairs less than now there are four conditions four possibilities are there in fact five possibilities are there so now see this is our railing can you see this so this is our railing right this is the railing for stairs similarly if the railing is installed here this will be for the platform okay to protect this material we can also install railing here but then it will be difficult to put the things here so if the people are working here then definitely we need to install railing so this will be standard rail mid rail and tow board so this is the railing for the stairs right clear clear okay. okay when we are dealing with the stairways stairways less than 44 inches have both sides enclosed and for example your stairways are installed in such a area where there is a wall and there is a wall so no need for hand railing right no need for hand railing. if there is a wall which is already closed there is a wall but osha right. standard yeah. says you need to it, have the hand need rails. to have hand rail yes hand rail available at one place right yeah why we need to have this what will be the benefit for climbing you will uh, you can hold this one it will support you to go up side okay this is one of the reason that it will help you to go up side but you won't slip what are you going to do in case of uh, emergency where we need to evacuate so if there is no handrail how will you come fast right yeah if yes there are yes. two two people are coming it's they will come easily no problem but what if 50 people are working on platform and they want to go all together so definitely when they will be keeping hands on it they can go faster as compared to if they will go directly only right Yes. Also, to go up, up, or to come down, you have to maintain three-point contact. Exactly, three-point contact, and it is also needed for the ladder as well. Ladder. Okay. So, if both our sides are closed, then we need to have the handrail on one side, and ideally, it should be on the right side. When we have stairs which are lesser than forty-four inches in wide, then we and one side is open, so definitely we are going to install the rail which is open side. If it is a left side or right side no problem when we have stairways less than 44 inches having both sides open then you are going to install two rails on each side because it might be possible a person can fall from the other side okay so you are going to install on on both sides when stairways are more than 44 inches but less than 88 inch one handrail shall be provided on each enclosed side and one stair rail on each side so if one side is open and one side is closed then you will be installing this of the side which is open on a stair was more than 88 inches and both side open then we need to install one more in between in between why in between you have more uh, uh, because the uh, the the space is so wide you should have as someone said three point contact even and uh, to support the rail see if you have stairways wide what does it mean in practical definitely when we have wide stairways which means that many people will be using this stairways yes yes and down so for yes. example in case of evacuation some people will come from this side some people will come from this side what about those people who are on the middle because it's very wide so if you are going to push them from the middle khalas all will go all will so, fall so that's why we need to have one more available here in between if the stairways are more than 8 8 inches which means very wide if you go to the malls 
you will find these kind of things right that the the stairs are wide so they have they need to have three available clear any question clear. okay good 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 now we have fixed industrial stairs fixed industrial stairs are required for access of platform for example to go on tanks to go on the platform to go on the store okay fixed industrial stair are required to carry a to have five times normal anticipated load for example if the you four four people are working there or if this uh, stairs will be using by one person then five times of the load this stair should bear fixed industrial stair at a very minimum any fixed stair shall be carrying minimum 100 1000 pounds which means almost 500 kilo at the same time normal weight for one person is like 80 90 100 so around five people can go easily and come down easily at at the same time all fixed stairs shall have minimum width of 22 inches though the width of the stairs should be minimum 22 inches and similarly so this is the width of the stairs okay you can see here also railing available see this is the this is the what is it can you see my pointer so board yes, yes. marwan so board yes so board so board i don't Marwan. forget it <laughs> okay good 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 clear alhamdulillah so alhamdulillah this is this is my learning with this this slide this is the first time i observe <laughs> See, every time yeah. as a trainer you will also have new learnings yes <laughs> so when we have the fixed stairs available it must be carrying five times of the load total persons or minimum 1000 pounds and the it should be minimum 22 inches of wide fixed industrial stairs shall be installed at an angle of 20 between 30 to 50 from the ground for example this is your ground so the angle here if we you take this as perpendicular right 90 degree so the angle should be minimum 30 and maximum should be 50 and the ideal is 45 but sometimes when you make it very wide so the more space is going to be consumed for example you see the space is going to be consumed so we can have reduce the space no problem but up to 30 it's it's ideal and then vertical clearance above any stair tread to an overhead obstruction shall be 7 feet measured if you are standing here on the last step so above you 7 feet should be clear if you are standing here 7 feet should be clear if you are standing here 7 feet should be clear why 7 feet because in america they have more height than us they are more taller than us so they have set the standard for 7 feet okay clear 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 clear, clear. good 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 Okay, now we have portable ladders. There are three kind of portable ladders. Okay, uh, one is the step ladder. Then we have single ladder. Then we have extension ladder. Uh, step ladder is a self-supporting ladder, non-adjustable in length, having flat steps and hinge back. This step ladder is, for example, this you can see this is our step ladder, right? No support needed. It is self-supported. You will just fix lock this hinges, and it has very good feet. so it is not going to slip single ladder is the normal ladder which we have normally in in our homes or in our small areas where we are going to use ladder very rarely uh, uh which is going to have with the wall okay this is our single ladder an extension ladder is the self supporting ladder sometimes you see you will find extendable ladders when in this ladder there will be another ladder which is going out have you seen this kind of ladders so yes these yes. are yes. our yes. extendable ah. ladder or extension ladders yeah. for example yeah. uh, never tie a ladder two together splice together to make them extendable uh, if you see here some precautions while we are using the ladders ladder shall be placed with a secure footing with a secure footing right the footing should be secure and shall be latched or held in position uh, should be properly latched right ladder used to gain access to a roof or other area shall extend minimum 3 feet above the point of contact yeah from here minimum 3 feet should be the distance uh then we have uh the foot of the ladder where possible is be used such as the pitch that the horizontal distance from the top to the foot of the ladder will be 1/4 for example 
if the size of this ladder okay if it is a 6 feet will be the distance between this ladder and the wall if it is a not a self supporting okay if it is a normal ladder so how do we know that it is a 45 degree total height make it divided by 4 this should be the distance between the wall and if you don't know how much is the 30 degree how you are going to measure 30 degree you don't have any measuring devices so as a thumb rule one quarter of the ladder if you this is 6 feet 6 divided by 4 2.5 oh 1.5 and then make the distance from the wall up to the ladder is 1.5 if a ladder is 10 feet make the distance according to it the worker shall always face the ladder when climbing up and down as we mr naim told that we need to follow the three point of contact when we are going up or when we are going down on the ladder short ladder shall not be spliced together to make a long ladder uh, this is a very common practice if you see uh when you have the air conditioner people most of pakistani people <laughs> they are having the shops for air conditioning here and they have to go second floor so from the outside they will put two ladders they will make rope make another ladder make another ladder and up to four five ladder they can tie together right so this is a very bad practice it's a very unsafe practice and this can cause uh too much you know loss of the uh, human life so ladders shall not be combined with each other by means of rope or any other thing uh, if we need to work on height we can use a scaffold we can use a cherry picker or some other kind of machinery we can use uh, ladder shall never be used as a horizontal position for scaffolding sometimes you have the ladder and you are using this instead of a scaffold instead of planks for a scaffold you are using the is uh, the scap uh, the ladder which is again it's a very dangerous activity the top of ladder shall be uh, a regular step ladder shall not be used as a step this should not be used as a step this activity metal ladder shall never be used on near electrical equipment because metal ladder if we are going to use near the uh, material uh, near the equipment it's a very good conductor so you will get electrical shock then quickly we will discuss about the scaffolding scaffolding is Uh, 1910 section number 28 the footing or encourage this footing or encourage of scaffolding should be strong enough uh, we should avoid the unstable objects such as barrels boxes loose bricks on the platform of our scaffolding A scaffolding should have the support of minimum four times see scaffold is a full field it's a full study right there are specialized people who are working in this uh, like you and me who are not having experience or the qualification available for a scaffold we cannot work there are three qualification of a scaffold a scaffold uh, erector a scaffold supervisor a scaffold inspector so it's a very uh, technical field any anyone cannot make the scaffolding how much the size how much should be the load management is going to be done the more height you will go which means that now more load management is needed so normally the scaffold and their components shall be capable of supporting four times for example here if there are required to work three people so your scaffold should should bear the weight of minimum 12 people four times of these three people and then if we are working above 10 feet then we need to have the guard rail mid rail and and the same thing our tow board available wire mesh must be installed in between the tow board and the guardrail along the entire opening where the persons are required to work or work under the scaffold so if the persons are working under the scaffold here your scaffold is very uh, is on height then there must be a safety net which needs to be installed so if any material by mistake it is going to fall it is going to fall on on this safety net rather than on the people employee shall never work on a scaffold during storms or high winds because it might be possible there is a chance of you know uh, dismantling or damage of scaffold so you and there is a chance of slippage so in rainy season in storms and in ice you should not work there on the scaffold a scaffold designed for 22 pascals per square foot is considered as a light duty scaffold this pascal is a unit of force right pascal is the unit of force. force so if your scaffold can bear up to 5 uh, up to 25 pascals we are going to say it's a light duty scaffold 
if for example this is my this platform okay how much force can it bear in one square feet in one square feet so if 25 pascal it can bear then which means that this is light due to scaffold if on the same one one square feet if it is 50 then we call it medium due to scaffold if it is 75 and above we call it heavy due to scaffold right 25 pascal per square feet light duty 50 pascal per square feet medium duty and 75 and above we call it heavy duty scaffold clear guys any question clear clear sir yes uh, that one the scaffold is it has it has it doesn't have a base plate in the in the ground yes yes so if too much heavy in top the put it will coming it will come go down right exactly exactly and that's why we need to have the load management available as i told you this is the responsibility uh, of a scaffold inspector to verify uh, the controls before he is going to allow have you seen sometimes you will find the green card on the scaffold sometimes there is a yellow card which yeah, means yeah, that it is yeah. on hold sometimes there is a red card on the scaffold which means that you are not allowed to work on this kind of scaffold right uh, uh, okay thank you no problem is select the best priority so what is the best priority for you administrative control engineering control or ppe for the hazard reduction engineering control ppe or administrative control administrative control, control. or ppe a b c or d which I mean, one is the correct control answer e yes guys g is a a b b the option b, b. is the best answer No. Okay. okay. Yes. Any other? Ibrahim. Dr. Mm. I will write. Musa. I think no one of the both because uh, it depends the situation. See, your answer is correct, but your reason is incorrect. <laughs> right your answer is correct in examination we will see your answer <laughs> the because the control is the sequence is remember elimination substitution engineering control administrative control and then pp so here yeah, you don't PPE. find this sequence anywhere yes okay so d is the yeah, yeah. remember yeah. what i told you guys yesterday those who are less experienced they will be in the results sometimes they are much better than those who are experienced so mind this this wording for me those who are new in the field they will be getting more marks than those who are already experienced okay a scaffold designed for 75 pascals per square foot is considered as light duty scaffold true or false 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 very good what is the light duty How much is the capacity? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Twenty-five per square. Very good. Come, Sheen or Sheen? What you call it? Come, sir or Sheen? Come, sir. Sir, Sheen. Come, sir. At least you, you guys should teach me Arabic if I am going to teach you something. No problem. OSHA standard require a scaffold to be designed with a factor of four is to one safety factor. Base factor is the max manufacturer maximum load capacity. True or false? this is false base factor is uh, yani for height yes right yeah, so base factor yes any other false so, sorry for loading capacity yani it, it, if it loading is for 1 kg loading capacity we have discussed that must yeah, be yeah yeah loading capacity more than times. four four times for the four. stairs it is five time for the for the scaffold it is four time four times so, so this true. is correct Correct. Those who are saying wrong, the answer is incorrect. Okay, so we have finished our topic. Just a short video, and then we will be finishing our session. Sure. So, guys, for tomorrow, what could be the timing? The ideal timing for you guys? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Anas, because tomorrow we have uh, work. Any work? Yes. So, I finish my work at five o'clock. Five o'clock, and then you come back by what time? 
خلاص يعني 15 مينيت او 20 مينيت اي ريتش ذات هوم سو يعني فور مي يعني اند انذر جايز اي دونت نو اي ثينك اتس ذا بيست واي بيست تايم اف وي ستارت ات 6 اوكي وات اوت اذر جايز بي 6 best time would be 6 cuz i also finish here in royal commission about 5:30 5 o'clock it takes about 15 minutes to get to my hotel okay good good yeah. good yes guys any other 6 is okay, okay. for everyone okay. then we will continue okay, okay. 6 is okay okay 6 is okay. okay so inshallah okay, 6, 6 to 9 or oh, 6 to 10 and oh, one more thing uh, it might be possible if since mashallah we have a group, a big group so if we will be having instead of sunday if we will finish by monday will it be okay for you guys or you have some commitment no 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 for no me, problem, for me no, problem. Uh, no, problem. no issues no problem. Fine by me. okay good because i don't want to go in a hurry see uh, yes. in virtual our uh, mode for training is a bit slower than definitely for the classroom. In classroom, you can go fast. Uh, you can cover even this OSHA 30 hours in three days, no problem. But if you have more time and uh, the time is going to spend where, uh, you know, with more exercises. But in virtual, we have to yes, make the things you know a bit easy, uh, slower. So just keep in mind, by Monday, inshallah, we will be finishing. Uh, but it might be possible that one more day plus minus. Not minus, but yes. Yeah, and no the, problem. The test, and the test, uh, inshallah, on uh, Monday or? Uh... Uh, see, when the course will finish, we will try to take the course on the same day, uh, the test on the same day. Okay. okay. If it will finish on Sunday, if it is going to finish on Monday, whatever. In the uh, US. Yes, guys, can you see my screen? The video? Yes. yes. No, the video on the screen. No, the video is not on the screen. No, we cannot see. Okay. How can you see if I'm not going to share? Until less, I'm going to share. How can you see? But where is the video now? Okay. What is it now? No. Where is the video? You can. Uh... Yeah. Can you see it now? In the US. The video? No. Maybe video we can no. hear this one. We can hear, but we can't see. Okay, okay, okay. Just a minute. This sometimes comes with the video because we have this full screen available. Now, inshallah, you can see. Can you see it now? Yes. Yes. US, more can you than hear 800 now? construction yes, workers yes, die every hear. year while on the job. Falls are the number one cause of fatalities in construction. Falls cause one of every three construction worker deaths. These falls happen in a split second while workers are on roofs, scaffolds, ladders, bridges, and other work surfaces. But these deaths can be prevented. The video you're